recording. Hope my computer doesn't explode. It shouldn't. Really should put the roll back on the tab. Same. All right. I believe we are live. Same. Yep. All right. So this is Slay Industries. This is our pilot um, episode, our first session. Um, we are starting off with all of our characters, brand new, just out of creation. Um, this is Slay Industry 2nd Edition um, from Nightfall Games. Um, if you're not familiar with the system, um, cyber horror punk-ish sort of style theming with a corporation controlling everything that the players work for. Uh, there are a variety of different races and things like that. I would suggest checking them out, Nightfall Games. Look them up on Google. Um, this is a system I've been playing for a very long time, at least the prior, prior version. Uh, so before we get started with the game, uh, let's go ahead and introduce the people who are playing. Uh, so if you want to introduce yourselves and tell us about the character that you have. Um, and, you know, for anybody who's not familiar with the realm, just kind of give us the Reader's Digest version of, of the gist of that person's race or anything like that. Um, Bill, Silver, we'll start with you. Okay, yeah, so my character is Silver. Uh, he's a 313 Malice Stormer, which is a, just a giant hulking war monster, basically. Like, Stormers are essentially uh, genetically enhanced uh, fighters with just huge, scary-looking dudes. And Matt, my... Patch. Uh, yeah, so Patch, real name's Yoltris, but goes by Patch. Um, they're an Ebonite. Um, they're gender fluid, so they kind of switch between pronouns as their, uh, whatever they're feeling like, but generally go for feminine. Uh, Ebonites are basically the magic users in this world. Um, humanoid, but with wildly colored hair, um, no pupils in their eyes, their eyes are all just, uh, like one color. And very, like, strong emotionally. Um, and a lot of times that reflects through uh, their hair color can change based on their emotions, which I thought was really neat. <laughs> All right, for Shrek, Simon. So I am playing as a frother, and he's a kind of a military marine-style heavy support operative. Frothers are these kind of evolutionary deviations from humanity they're basically um, mutated scots people mutated by generations of heavy drug use so all frothers are addicted to some sort of substance so um but and like scottish highlands they're very clannish warlike they do walk around with big old revved up power claymores so is essentially brave cyber braveheart on meth. <laughs> All right, uh, and Sabrina, aka Reggie. Um, so Reggie is basically a bird person, uh, Neophron. They are um, bird bird-like people, and they thrive for knowledge and getting to know new people and that kind of thing. Um, Reggie is doing his best to fit in in an area where he do wouldn't normally fit in, so he's trying to like fit in with the cool kids, so he calls himself Reggie instead of um, his, you know, long fancy name. Uh, he tries to, you know, speak the lingo and be with like the cool kids and that kind of thing. Uh, he's a bit of a tech nerd, hacker. Um, you know, he'd rather talk or tech his way out of things rather than shoot, um, you know, try to avoid violence and that kind of thing. So, yeah, he's kind of a nerd, but he's trying to fit in with, with everybody, with the cool kids. Avoiding violence, that's cute. <laughs> and last but not least, Rauka, a.k.a. Perry. Hi, I'm Perry. Uh, Rauka is a uh, advanced carrier. Sort of a, a vermin uh, race, uh, humanoid, but uh, most notable feature, other than this juicy booty, is the skinless dog skull. 
All right. Uh, Perry, if you get a chance, could you just turn your mic up a tick just to make sure that we can hear you? I'll turn down the uh, music a little bit, but just to make sure we're all good there. Okay, so that's our squad. Um, this is the uh, first time that they're all going to be meeting each other. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and start things off. Um, they uh, have all recently graduated from uh, what is called uh, Maney, the Operative Academy. So these people are all operatives who are working for uh, a global dominating, really universe dominating corporation called Slay Industries. Uh, and they are fresh meat. They are brand new graduates uh, just out of school, essentially, uh, heading for their first day on the job. Uh, so we are going to start off with, uh, unless uh, anybody has any reason to have not shown up for their regular orientation time, uh, Silver, Patch, uh, Reggie, and Rauka, uh, you all meet at approximately the same time um, in the BPN hall. Um, so you've kind of been given a tour of the Slay Industries offices, um, all the way up to the head office, down to some of the other departments, with kind of a large group of other new operatives. Um, this is not something that is kind of like a scheduled thing, uh, as new operatives come in very regularly every single day. Uh, so you've just kind of wound up in this particular group. Uh, and then upon being taken through the tour of the different areas, you are brought back down to the uh, main Mort Central BPN Hall, um, where you are organized into a group uh, and then told that your fifth member will be arriving uh, shortly. Uh, so that's where we're going to leave you guys. Then we're going to cut quickly to Fair Shrek. Fair Shrek, this is about a uh, few hours ago. Um, so we're kind of hopping back in time a little bit. Uh, you were actually told uh, what squad that you were going to be a part of. Um, because of your pension for um, violence and aggression, um, you have found a spot in a group called the Gutter Five, uh, which is a frother squad uh, that is of some renown. Um, recently, they did lose a member in combat. Um, of which is fairly frequent for the Gutter Five, uh, and they have decided that you would be a good fit as a replacement. Um, unfortunately, you wake up late um, in your bad housing, in your bad downtown apartment. Uh, you roll over and realize that your alarm clock is off, and uh, something has chewed through the power cord. Uh, so... <laughs> So you you get up, you panic, uh, you rush through uh, public transit, getting on one of the elevator blocks to take you back up to Mort Central. Uh, you run into the main BPN hall, find that you've missed the initial tour, uh, and then upon uh, getting there, one of the organizing officers for the new operatives uh, has said, um, unfortunately, the Slaughter Five, the Gutter Five, have taken off. Uh, they've already found a replacement, but uh, we think we can fit you into another group. Uh, so he gives you coordinates to go to a location in the hall. Uh, so the BPN hall, think of it kind of like um, a darker, dingier version of like Grand Central Station. Um, so there are a variety of different um, kind of lift tubes coming in from different parts of the slight offices and whatnot, um, these, instead of going to like different parts of the city or the world, just go to different parts of this complex, essentially. Um, and they kind of shunt you all into different areas. There are seating spots where there are a variety of giant screens where you can look to take up, uh, your different missions and BPNs, which we'll get into a little bit more later on. But the four of you, uh, Sans, Fair Shrek, are already organized, um, and just starting to get to introduce each other when you see a frantic uh, frother uh, who's probably pretty angry at this point um, kind of stomp his way uh, over to the group and you can only assume that this is the fifth member. Well. Hey, you are late. Oh, uh, hmm. And uh, Pat looks in her like bag that she has and just looks through and looks like she's counting something and then just goes back. Okay. That's how she's gonna go. What's that supposed to mean? Hi, I'm Reggie. Nice to meet I'm you. The more well adjusted end of the spectrum of my class. All right, so Fair Shrek uh, asked Patch um, what, uh, what you meant by that. Well, we got a little broken up by the feed, so um, what did you mean by that, Patch? 
Oh, nothing. I'm just making sure I'll uh, inventory all of my uh, chems at the end of every night from now on. Okay, so Pat's just insinuating that First Wreck is going to steal their drugs um, that they may have at some other point. Already showing a bit of a prejudice towards... Uh, yeah, uh, no. Then you're fine. Alright, so uh, Reggie, you're kind of watching these people kind of squabble already and trying to think of a good time to interject yourself for an introduction, and Patch and Fair Shrek uh, start, stop bickering long enough for you to get a word in. Hi, I'm Reggie! And I stick my wing out. Mm. Well, are you ready to work? Oh, yeah, yeah. Heart rate's at 290. Let's do this. <laughs> um, so, the f so the four of you are a pretty uh, eclectic mix of, of um, operatives, um, actually not having a human among any of you, um, which even under, in the circumstances of, of this environment is somewhat rare. Um, are there any... Mm -hmm. For others, are technically a different race at this point. Although you may consider yourself closer to human, um, or even as a human itself. So, if that's how you feel, um, but you do have again, you know, a stormer with you, uh, Silver, who has interjected a couple things, uh, and an advanced carrion, um, uh, known in slave parlance as an ADV, um, trying to uh, get away from the carrion stigma because carrion for. Mm, hundreds and hundreds of years were known as vermin, essentially, um, that is to be disposed of. Um, Slay has recently experimented with working with um, capturing some of them and performing essentially experiments on them to increase their intelligence. Um, as a result, uh, some advanced carrion or ADV have come through and actually made their way through the operative program, and you happen to be with one of them right now. Looks like a firing range target. You say that out loud? Yes. So, <laughs> Veronica, Silver looks at you and says yeah. that. Congratulations! One of the old ones. Is he saying that about me? Yep. Yeah. Okay, um... Um, I don't think that there's a... Uh, unless you guys are really gonna go to kill each other, um... Silver, you, yeah, you, you look at Rauka and mention that he looks similar to one of the firing targets, and he punches you in the mouth. Um, he hits you hard, um, harder than other people would typically be able to hit you. Um, you absorb it easily, as there's very, very few things in the way of unarmed blows that will be able to damage you in any way. Um, and he probably wasn't going full out for broke. Um, what's your reaction to being punched by uh, your squad mate? I stay pretty calm. I'm like, fair. <laughs> nice hit. I like it. <laughs> Absolute mad lad. So, um, Rapper flexes and kind of like, kind of side eyes looking for cameras. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, you know, you guys uh, level yourself off. Um, oh, there we go. I was monkeying around with the audio a little bit there. Okay. Uh, um, so, yeah. Uh, Reggie, you watch as, as uh, you know, two of your teammates uh, go come to blows. The third one cheers them on. Um, Patch looks fairly disinterested by the whole uh, scenario. Um, you being a non-combat related, or at least a non-combat specialist, um... What are your thoughts on this? Well, I, I, after they told me their names, I've been like trying to search them on the internet to see what kind of information I can find out about them. <laughs> okay, so as you guys are brawling out, um, Reggie's just sitting there with a clamshell laptop, and basically like a, a very kind of small handheld version, um, little more than kind of like a, a like a large smartphone of, of what we would have, and she's, and he's kind of typing away, bum 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 bum. 
Um, Reggie, you pull up the dossiers um, of your squad mates, um, which actually the information has been passed to you already. Um, it's stuff that would have been made available to anybody else, but nobody really bothers or cares to check. Uh, and you get their information. Um, they all were fairly... None, none were particular standouts in Mani of Herr Shrek. Uh, you, you, get their, you get a feel for their specialties and things like that. Um, you know, Fair Shrek had a penchant for violence, as did Silver. Uh, Patch did excel in um, Ebon abilities uh, and in combat situations, stayed very calm under pressure. Uh, though she does uh, seem to have a, a bit of a disconnect that is unusual for uh, Ebonites. Uh, and Rauka had, uh, as ADVs are generally a little bit more closely watched um, and studied carefully, uh, progressed through the operative program we or well. Um, few nobody had particularly any more disciplinary issues than usual, although Fresh Shrek had the most out of all of you. Um, <laughs> Then, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah sure. Um, although he's not the one who who punched uh, one of his coworkers already. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so as as you all are kind of um, you know bickering and studying each other and sizing each other up, uh, you have a there's a man in a uniform who comes by uh, and he has like a, a like a data pad, almost like a, a like a translucent sort of clipboard um, looking sort of thing, and he kind of looks at it and. And he says, all right, so you five are a squad then. Looks like it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, I... All right. Uh, so uh, the guy is human. Uh, you know, he looks over the, the group of you and he's like, okay, Neofron, you're the leader. Um, he, uh, he hands uh, yeah. each of you your operative cards, your um, slave badges and IDs. Um, you've already received your standard issue equipment in terms of your pistols and um, all of the things that come in your starting equipment kit. Uh, and uh, the uh, officer turns to you, Reggie, and says, all right, uh, take this card over to that terminal over there and you can register your squad so you can get in the BPN system. And then he turns and walks away. Thank you. He doesn't acknowledge your thanks as he walks off. No. That's okay. He just didn't hear me. <laughs> okay. All right, so, guys, you excited? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> uh, I drop down to two fifty. I'm relaxed. <laughs> Actually, I kind of like the fact that I can hide behind at least three of you. So. <laughs> All right. Just hold your own weight when the shite gets real. Oh, trust me, I can definitely do that. All right, uh, Reggie, do you take the information over to the terminal? Yes. Okay. Uh, does anyone else in the party go with her and then go oh, with yeah. Reggie? Or? Yeah. Okay, so right. Patch is okay. going over, Rauk is going behind, everybody's I going would with follow them. First That's time. sure why not. Okay. Uh, so, Reggie, you walk over to the terminal, your whole party comes in tow. Uh, so you uh, go up and you slide your information into the registration. Uh, a screen pops up that has the Slay Industries logo on it uh, and a voice uh, comes through that says, Hello and welcome to the Slay Industries operative registration kiosk. Uh, please insert the ID cards of all of the members of the squad. And I've got it like already. Okay. You each step up and slide it in and whatnot. Um, after a few seconds, uh, there's kind of like a chime. It's like, Broop. thank you. Please name your squad. You have 30 Rauka. seconds to name your squad. Rauka. Rauka. Put Rauka. Sam. Congratulations. Your squad name is Rauka. Rauka. Put Rauka. Yes. <laughs> oh, this will be bad. It's easy enough to scream. I can do that. Uh, and then uh, as... Uh, um, you know, once it comes out, it's, it prints out um, all of your badges back to you, and on the squad part of your ID, it has Rauka, Rauka, put Rauka. Great. <laughs> That's awesome. That works, I guess. <laughs> um, and it says, uh, Perfectly hey. acceptable moniker. Thank you, and welcome to Slay Industries. Uh, your information has been entered into the BPN queue. Please wait for your squad name to be called when you will be assigned BPNs. You know it's a pain to change this, right? Like, why would you want to change? Change your 
True. Okay, that's a good name. That's a good name. We'll we'll, we'll stay with this name. I like the name. Yeah. See, we could have been something cool like Doombringers or like. Oh. Doombringers is taken. Yeah. We could have been like Doombringers, but with an X on either side. Also taken. Like X Doombringers X taken. Fourteen. Yeah. That would have been, Who's gonna that forget that name? What if we switch the O's and Doombringers to zero? Also taken. <laughs> All yeah. Right. All right. Right there on the leaderboard. Read mine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, as you guys are kind of discussing your uh, your squad name, um, another squad kind of comes up behind you. You move off to the side and you move more into the actual full BPN hall area. Uh, so again, um, rows of seats along with um, screens that are more like digital like boards as opposed to like full TV screens. Um, and then uh, they have uh, names or numbers, um, kind of a mixture of both. So you can tell that some are squad names, some are squad numbers. Um, hopefully uh, you get a name because you don't know your number. Uh, <laughs> so uh, you sit down with a probably at this point, at this time of day, 400 or so. Um, other operatives in varying degrees of armor and uniforms and whatnot uh, that you uh, you see sitting there and waiting for their BPNs. Yeah, I'm saying that, and that uh, Patch is just like staring at the board and like their legs kind of bouncing up and down, fidgeting. Like you can tell this is they're, they're a little nervous, but they're also trying to hide it. So like they'll notice that it's fidgeting and then they'll put their hand on it and like stop. And then, like, uh, a few minutes later, it just starts bouncing again. Their Shrek starts to detox for a second as his watch goes off. And then he, like, hits his drug dispensary system. Okay, so you're sitting in the BPN hall and you hit yourself with another dose of rush. Um, the drugs run through you, um, a feeling you're pretty familiar with at this point. Um, but you light up and you do start to feel pretty aggressive at this point um as you're kind of starting to feel your blood flow start you know really cranking through again um you see a uh, group of uh frothers walking by who you recognize as the gutter five um they have kind of uh, matching armor this hard uh, you know hard armor um a little bit better level than what you guys would have um, their badges read um, variety. Four of them have um, LCLs in the nines, and then one of them has an SCL 10 who's wearing body blocker armor um, that's kind of out of match with the rest of them. He goes from like berserk and chewing on his lip and blood coming out of it to just defeated and deflated. <laughs> and he takes, he takes his military commissar s cat and just covers his eyes with it uh patch you you watch you look over at uh fair shrek and uh you you notice him starting to kind of really fidget and then you know literally his mouth starts bleeding um and then he kind of starts to get like weirdly dejected and depressed um the initial hit you figure was probably from a dose of rush you have enough um medicine to kind of realize mm -hmm. that um, but you know, the second one you can't quite explain. So, as we brought So, Silver, you're, you're like observing it and getting ready to mention something to Fresh Wreck, and Silver just blurts over to you, uh, asking Fresh Wreck what his problem is. Like shit, roaches. <sighs> Right. Shit, roaches. Okay. Yeah. Um. Excellent. Damn thing chewed me me bloody alarm clock in half. Oh, is that why you were late? I. I have to get a new I'm one. I'm gonna try free breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> um. Reggie, you watch the board. Um, it has been probably half hour, 45 minutes or so, sitting around at this point. 
Um, you just kind of take everything in. Um, this is the first time you've been in this sort of environment. And as somebody who likes to experience new things um, and have, uh, you know, new um, learning experiences, um, this is something that's interesting for you. You get to study a lot of different um, operatives, a lot of different types of armor. You can kind of see where your career can potentially progress to. Um, at some point uh, in the future should you stay alive long enough um, and hopefully keep everyone else around you alive as well. Um, your squad mates are kind of uh, talking a little bit amongst themselves. Um, as the de facto leader of the group, is there anything that you want to communicate to them? Um, no, just I'm really excited to work with all of you. Uh... I think that, uh, you know, once we get to know each other, we'll make a, a great team. Uh, RRPR. We got well. this. PR. And yeah. I would like to let all of you know I am here as a support role, not only in firefights, but among the team. So if any of you have those mushy inner feely problems, might be able to do something about it. You know what you mean with drugs? I don't, I only I only failed my human resources class by two points. I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Apparently headbutting is not a acceptable way to deal with someone in shock. No, no, it is definitely not an acceptable way to deal with them. Listen, if someone goes into shock, just let me handle it. Oh, are you going to shock? Um, and I look at everyone else, yeah. and I'm like, we'll let Reggie handle it. Yeah. All right, um, so you sit and kind of make small talk and watch the different groups kind of come in and out for about two hours. Um, it's really getting to the point where this place is starting to get kind of very boring, um, really kind of unbearable. Uh, you see, uh, as you're waiting, a couple squads just kind of say, fuck it, get up and leave. Um, and um, Reggie, you notice that uh, as you're kind of watching everybody, that when a squad gets called up, it is typically one member of the squad that goes in and accepts the VPNs because the actual offices are basically like cubicles, like one person cubicles. Um, they're full offices, but they're basically the same size. Um, so when that time comes, then you will probably be handling that on your own. And just as you start to think about that, uh, you do see across one of these scrolling green digital boards, uh, Rauka, Rauka, put Rauka, uh, come across the top. Like a, yeah, I like it. Yeah. It looks on the board. And when Pat sees that, like, they straighten up a little bit. Uh, they, they start to, like, slouch in their uh, seat, and they, like, kind of straighten up, and they, like, look over, like, do you, do you see that? Like, ready, because they're ready to... I straighten my pat. I straighten my hat, get my armor right, put my badge front and center... Yeah, this is, you know, for all of you, this is you know, th this is the first point where the shit starts to feel real. Like, this is where you really start to feel like you're, this is your job, this is, you know, you're an operative, this is what you're here to do, and you're about to get into it for your first ever BPN mission. Um, so, Reggie, you, the call is on you. Um... All right, I've been uh, typing all my observations and everything to my online community, and I look up and see the name, and I, I shut my computer, stop typing, and I'm like, all right, I'm ready, and I go um, where I need to go. I, I get up, and I make the follower him. Okay, um, Reggie, Rauka gets up and goes to uh, follow you over to the VPN office. Um, I think it's only one person at a time, but don't worry, I'll keep you guys updated. Oh, oh, uh, uh. Hey, just grab his shoulder. All right. All right, yeah. Tell him only, only one at a time, homie. All right, boy, sit down. Don't worry. Reggie's the leader. He's got this. Okay, uh, Reggie, you get up and you walk over to one of the um, BPN offices. 
Um, you sit down uh, with uh, another officer similarly uniformed to the one who kind of groups you all together and give you your registration information. Uh, he uh, looks over to you uh, and he says, uh, are you from? And he kind of stares at the screen. He's like, uh, Rauka, Rauka, put Rauka. Yeah, if you could just abbreviate that to R R P R, that'd be awesome. Um, he shrugs. He's like, I have to go with what's on the screen. I'm sorry. <laughs> you hear me laugh Fair. in the distance. <laughs> <laughs> All right. He says uh, he he taps a few things, and then um, a small printer next to him um, spits out um, a couple different things. He says, "It's like, all right, this looks like it's your uh, first time here at the office." Uh, he says, seems like you've gotten the hang of it, though. Uh, normally we have the whole squad come up, and it's just a mess. Um, he, uh, then, uh, grabs a couple, uh, small cards off of the table and slides them across to you. He's like, um, so it looks like we got a couple choices for you to start off with. Uh, go ahead and look those over. Um, you know, we got a maintenance one. Pretty good first-time operative missions. Uh, blues maintenance is always fairly low risk um, but we do have a yellow if you are feeling to do a, a little bit more more corporate work maybe a little less dirty um, it's actually not a bad break usually those things don't come through for tens sorry I just uh, the screen it was hard for me to see it's okay can you are... see it okay now yeah it didn't kind of move things around yeah um, you might have to zoom in to get the text and everything right but yeah Okay, okay. Four. So, yellow, is that considered more difficult? So, yellow or? would be a corporate BPN. Um, so, that is um, okay. what would be considered kind of more of an upper class one. Um, again, um, usually they involve dealing um, with some sort of documentation or some sort of corporate executive individuals um, or something. Escort missions, retrieving documents, things like that. And then blues are um, just general um, maintenance things. Yellows tend to be uh, a little bit more um, scrutinized uh, in terms of, you know, people are watching you if you fuck up. There's potentially bigger ramifications for that. Whereas a maintenance one, you know, number one, they're easy. And number two, if you mess up, no one's going to be super mad at you for it. Okay, so is this like... Reggie's asking, I gotta pick one, or like, we could do both of these, but like, in a certain order? No, like, no, no, it's just, I... it's just one per operative, so the, all the one that you don't select will go back mm -hmm. into the queue. And as he's talking, um, the small printer next to him spits out another one, um, and he reaches over and takes a look at it, and he goes, oh, never mind. He, uh, he slides one over to you, he's like, Red just came in, here you go. So you would know as a as an um, a decent student of Maney that uh, red BPNs um, are emergencies uh, and they cannot be okay. rejected or turned down by a squad. Um, if you are given a red BPN when it is your turn, you have to go take it. Okay. All right. Well, I guess the decision's been made for me, huh? Good luck. Thanks. <laughs> Nice Squawk. meeting you. <laughs> it's like, uh, yeah, you too. Uh, um, Reggie gets like, up. Over to the team? Yeah, so Reggie gets up and uh, runs over to runs over to you guys. Um, <laughs> he is um, princey, um, pretty. I wouldn't say frantic, but definitely uh, in some sort of hurry um, as he approaches the group. And like I'm on my feet as soon as I see him start running. Look, guys, we got an emergency mission. And I, like, hold it up. Okay, but what is it? Oh, uh, it's a hostage situation. Oh, um, boy. Ninth yeah. Division unit, Third Eye News report. Oh, they captured a reporter. Eliminate threats. Return the reporter to safety. They captured a reporter? So the news will be there. That's going to be a lot of cameras on us. Awesome. This is a great opportunity for me. Exactly. I'm going to reach under my kilt, pull out my blue ribbon, and kiss it for good luck. Okay. And put it back where it belongs. Where? <laughs> <laughs> Take my head. 
Just leave that hanging. Um, <laughs> so, would, would it logistically make sense that I can, like, see from the news cameras, like, what's happening in that area? Um, or? so... There is um, a departmental authorization to this threat analysis, so if you want more information or additional information on the BPN, you can contact them. Um, but uh, if you do spend your time uh, kind of bumping through the different channels, um, you will come across a feed um, of a man uh, in body blocker armor um, that is black and red. Uh, let me see. I can probably pull up a picture of what you're looking at here. Um, mm -mm, let me just grab that. Mm -hmm. So, somebody who looks like that. Uh, talking into a camera, and you can see a woman in her early 20s kind of um, bound to a chair. Um, slumped over, but doesn't appear to have any immediate signs of injury um, to her. Uh, and the guy is talking to the camera um, about uh, joining the 9th Division and how um, Slay Industries uh, is a blight on its people, both at the operative, shiver, and civilian level. Um, join us and we will bring them to their knees. Uh, so he's just kind of spouting off a lot of propaganda stuff um, at this point, but you can surmise pretty easily that this is the um, situation that the BPN is in reference to. We better get going. Uh, well, I think we should have a plan. What's our plan? Uh, Maybe we should head to the area, scope out, see how many men we're dealing with, distract them, fire, murder, more murder, find hostage, profit. That's about right. We should go. Maybe, maybe uh, you know, try not to have too many casualties in this. Yeah. What do you mean? Yeah. Um. Uh, yeah, civilian casualties minimum. But uh, hostels. Uh, the hostels send them to the cannibal sector for haggis. Yeah, we should go. Okay. <laughs> okay. So silver in the shoulder and say, "I'm gonna pound that guy's face in." You what, mate? No, no. Uh, pointing to the TV, the guy that was talking. Good. Like, yeah, that's who he's. That's talking. a good plan. I like. I like your energy now. Just don't pop me in the face. That hurt. <laughs> <laughs> well. Yeah, you, you gotta rip open the can so you can see the squishy face. Then you can see how much bigger your fist is as you ram it down into a stomach and break a spine. <laughs> we'll also do. Uh, would, would we be familiar with this? Uh, like what group this is or anything like that? Anybody? Um, does anybody have any ranks in the skill rival company? No. So knowledge rival company, or edge? Uh, yeah, it knowledge. Okay. Um, if you don't, you would still know that the Ninth Division um, is a former... Uh, they're basically defected shivers, uh, and shivers are... Whereas you would be special operatives in, like, the FBI level, shivers are kind of, like, more like the local police level. Um, they uh, are a group of usually former shivers who have defected uh, to rebel against Slay Industries um, for a variety of purposes... Uh, and sometimes you will get low-level operatives that uh, other rival companies like Dark Knight um, are not interested in um, that wind up in the Ninth Division as well. Uh, typically human. Um, they typically carry a mixture of shiver equipment, which would be inferior to yours, as well as some um, mixture of lower-level slay, uh, slay weapons and Dark Knight weapons that they may have acquired from the black market. All right, I pull out my fern assault rifle. Let's, Bessie, it's time for your big debut. Yeah, we should, should go. Oh, I got several problems. 
All right, Reggie, your group is uh, itching to to hit the streets. Um, do you have any other questions or things that you want to plan? Uh, like I said, threat analysis is available to you as a re resource. Um, you can contact them through your radio channel, um, so you can potentially um, talk to them on the move um, if you were to wish to do so. Uh, yeah, I think I, I just wanted to see if I can, like, see the situation of like where this is okay uh like if there's like ca like street cameras or something like i don't know okay. if we know the location that kind of thing okay uh so you call through to threat analysis who gives you more information um regarding the situation uh, you know, they, they tell you um, similar things that you've already kind of gained to yourself, um, that the Ninth Division have kidnapped a, or captured a, uh, a third eye news reporter who happened to be uh, downtown. Uh, this particular section of downtown, District 4112, um, has gotten the nickname of Sugar Street because it happens to uh, house a variety of uh, different um, candy factories or um, different food um, production plants and things like that. Um, the Ninth Division have actually held up this particular operative in a uh, factory for Stupid Cola, uh, which is a soft drink that is popular in the downtown districts. Fair Shrek, you have heard of it before. Um, it is a small uh, facility. Uh, it is about, uh, it is one floor, but it's warehouse style. Um, so there may be kind of multiple platforms or levels within it. Um, based on distillery tanks and things like that. Uh, there is no roof entrance as the roof has a uh, water collection system for the soda. Um, the fact that this is uh, in level four of downtown, um, the quality of the water immediately kind of comes to mind as the source of, of this soda. Probably not the best thing. Um, How far away are we from my apartment? Um, you, you would probably be in like district two or so. So it's like two levels down. Um, so it's, oh. a, it's almost, it's a fair, it's below where you're at. Um, but you've still, you've still heard of it before, but you also probably have stayed away from it or may not have heard great things about it, but it is pretty popular with the lower half of, um, inner downtown. Uh, I do drugs, not soda. You, you can only do one. <laughs> Come on. Fair enough. It's not Coca-Cola, right? Right. <laughs> yeah. Coca-Cola or meth. Uh, I already picked one. <laughs> right. um reggie let's see um why don't you go ahead and um oh additionally actually so before we get to that um in addition to the information you've been given you've also been told that you have uh, been arranged a transport by shiver unit 189j uh and given coordinates to the vehicle pools where you will be brought down in a crawler apc and dropped off at the location um so you can get there faster than were you to take public transportation okay and sergeant mack will be your contact for uh the shiver unit Sergeant Mack, he frother, or just a human with a cool name? Human. Well, you don't okay. know for sure, but typically the majority of shivers are human. Fair enough. Okay. So with that information, what do you do? Get on the transport. Uh <laughs> yeah. Hi. You heading over to the vehicle pool? To the motor pool. I'm totally not taking a bus to a hostage situation. Too good for tr public transport, Lottie. I mean, time is of the essence. I mean, have you ridden the public transport around here? Well. Yeah, and I think we would we would take the transport, right? Okay, so the, sorry, okay. okay, so you head over to the vehicle pool. Um, you come up to uh, you know, like basically kind of like a, a big garage, essentially. Um, and at the parking spot that was um pointed out to you by threat analysis, uh, there is a uh, giant, yeah, large APC. You know, really kind of looks like um like an armored small bus almost um, that has an, um, a mounted machine gun on top. Um, 
And outside of that is standing a man in green body blocker armor, which is the trademark of Shivers, and actually looks very similar to what all of you are wearing as well, except for Patch. Um, yeah. Um, and would I be able to, like, while we're moving, like, look up any more information sure. as far as, like, my hacking stuff? Yeah, so you'll be able to pull up additional information um, in in transit. Um, as you walk over, uh, the man in the armor um, comes over to you and he says, uh, are you the uh, you the squad that's heading to the red? Yes. Are you all right? He nods, like, get in. Have you been watching the feeds, the news feeds? It's like, yeah, we're well, well briefed on the situation. It's some, uh, there's former shivs in there, aren't there? You recognize any of them? It's like, uh, not personally, no. He uh, opens, opens the back for the group of you to crawl in. As he does, you notice that there are already um, three uh, shivers sitting in the back, um, one in the passenger seat on the front, uh, and then Sergeant Mack goes into the uh, driver's side. I say, uh, just to be sure, the, the coordinates are 4-112, correct? Yeah, that's where you're going. Uh, Mac calls back as he climbs into the driver's seat. Just checking. Um, so, so the five of you uh, cram into the back uh, with the group um, who kind of... Um, it's difficult to see exactly their expressions or their, um, you know, their sizing up of you because of they're all wearing armor. Um, all of them have their helmets on um, at this point. Uh, and they, they kind of give you the glance over, um, and the APC drives off. Well, this is a special occasion. I take out a tube of blue grease paint and start doing up half my face. <laughs> All right. Uh, Ralka looks on, it's like, oh. <laughs> I guess I've been down. Listen together. I'll go, I'm going traditional. There, yep, there are going to be lots of cameras on us there. So one, be on your best behavior, and two, make it showy. Cause... <laughs> I'm in this for the money. Here has never done me wrong. I pull on my power claim. Uh, who here has a detect higher than two? Um, that is a good, good question. You do, Reggie. I do. Right? I have I do. Nice. Reggie, Patch, anybody else? I'm in two. All right. Uh, um, my my bonus is four. Do you mean, nope. do you mean just, the, right? just the skill itself? Yeah, mine's just that, too. Damn it. Just two. Okay. Um, Reggie, what's yours? Three. Yours is a three. Patch, yours is only at a two? Uh, yeah, I have vision good, but other than... Okay. Okay. No. And does anybody have any ranks in good hearing? Nope. I have good hearing. Okay. All right. So, Fair Shrek, I'll put you in for that too, Reggie. Um, so you're kind of greasing yourself up, Reggie. You're um, you pull out your laptop um, and you're starting to work away. And as you do, uh, you hear um, one of the shivers in the back talking to another, who says uh, something along the lines of like, "And they had to call in the slops because it's going to be on camera." No. Yeah. Let's see how fuck up. Let's see how much they fuck things up. Look like babies too. I sniff them. Uh, Rocco, you did not hear that. Um, your detective is not low enough there, or you're high enough. Reggie and <clears throat> Shrek, you both heard that. I lied. What? Um, one of them turns over. I to lied. You. <laughs> so can I? Can I help you? He he like looks over to you. I left me other kilt at your ma at your ma's house last night. Uh, can you stop by and grab it for me after this is over. Um, uh, I'd like to interject and be like, uh, don't mind them. Um, Rocco thinks that's. I kind of couldn't help but overhear you say, "You're, you don't think we can do this? Uh, is there something we should know?" No, I never said that. I don't think you can do it. I just said it's going to be fucked up. You'll probably kill whatever is there, but reporter girl, he looks like he kind of moves his glove. He's like ADV, froth, stormer, 
Yeah, I mean, you're okay. But a hostage negotiation... And he kind of leans back against the seat. I laugh and I say, don't antagonize the help, guys. I don't know what that means, but I'm going to... Um, that was funny. <laughs> do I... Will, uh, will I be able to talk to the person who is holding them hostage as far as, as you say, to negotiate? Is that well, that's gonna possible? Well, that's going to be up to you. Um, there are no particular tools that you have at your disposal right now um, to speak with them. Um, but should you think of something, there's that is entirely possible. Um as you are um, kind of going back and forth with the shivers and trying to keep things from coming to blows between them and the rest of your squad, um, you are punching along on your computer. Um, how many ranks do you have in computer? Two. Two ranks. Go ahead and give me a skill check. Um, so you're going to be rolling four dice. Uh, so it's your success die plus your skill plus one. Uh, and you're going to be adding in your bonus to each of those. And if you put it in the chat, then I can... Uh, and I can take a look and see how it goes. So how would you like me to input it? I know how to roll, but like you want me to do. So I mean, I did make a macro. D10? I did a, I did a, a ma I did make macros. If you go into the macro section, the two skill one um, should roll um, four individual dice, and then you can just and then you can just in your head add, add your bonus to each of those. The first one that you roll will be your success die. Well, let me just try it and see if I'm gonna. I'm doing this right. Just four d10, right, and then go yep. from there. Yep, four d10. Okay, uh, and what's your bonus? Eight. Oh, okay. Um, so you, yeah, you pull up um, as as you're going through and trying to get camera information. Um, you are not able to pull up. Um, a camera feed uh, because the cameras in this particular section of downtown are busted um, but what you are able to pull up is a blueprint of the surrounding area okay Um, additionally, as you're kind of um, punching through and, and bringing up information, you do manage to find out that the uh, name of the uh, leader of this particular group of 9th Division soldiers uh, is Gildrich Ullman. Do you ask now, or...? That's the one who's, like, talking on the... Yes. ...feed? Yep. Would you let us know, or are you just kind of looking it up and taking note of it? Yes. No, I, yeah, I, I would share that with you guys. So I kind of awkwardly get up and, like, shuffle through this crowd thing to sit next to one of the, um, one of the, uh, chefs, and I'm like, do you know Allman, Gil Gildrich Allman? Um, the, uh... Guys look through, um, and one of them says, like, um, I don't know, I think, like, I knew an Allman. I heard of a guy, like, on the radio call um, a year or so ago, but beyond that, no. Shiver's units are a pretty large organization. Um, you know, for every, for, every, for every slay operative, there are probably ten Shivers. Uh, so uh, it is not entirely possible that they would all know each other. Um, right. But, uh, you know... Depending on different things that have happened, uh, like I said, this one says he's heard a, he's heard the name in radio calls. Doesn't know if it's the same guy or not. Hi, boss. You got this guy's uh, records there. He uh, he got any rewards, marksmanship, black belt? What are we looking at? Am I able to find any information on him? Uh, yeah, with a computer roll like that, um, where you had such a big success, um, you're able to pull up uh, information about his prior history. Um, he's not a particularly remarkable um, 
combat specialist. Uh, he's fairly middle of the road in terms of everything. Uh, he had some uh, disciplinary uh, issues for um, use of force on civilians, um, unsanctioned use of force on civilians uh, in a couple different instances, um, and then resigned um, from the Shivers, uh, and then probably about a few months later or so he popped up. Um, they have some pictures of him in um, Red Division blocker armor, um, where he has you know shown to have joined that group. Um, Additionally, you get some information than the 9th Division that you didn't have previously, um, that uh, this is actually a somewhat common practice um, amongst 9th Division um, units uh, to do stunts like this. Uh, they call them fame squads, uh, where they will do this as um, usually some sort of recruitment tactic or a way to gain notoriety. Uh, this usually ends in their death. Um, because it usually ends up running them directly into Slay Industries or operatives in some sort of way. However, in the rare occasions that they do succeed, uh, their profile within the 9th Division is elevated considerably. Okay. And just so you know, as far as the map goes, um, the light blue sections on the street, or on the ground, are paved street. Um, this is where vehicles come by and whatnot. Um, so there is a little bit of a pull-up to the side's uh, entrance to Stupid Cola, um, where you can probably assess that that's a loading dock uh, that's over there. Um, that's probably where shipments come in and go out. Uh, you, The uh, white marks in the walls are doors. Uh, so there are... Uh, there is the loading dock, which is elevated up, probably not going to be an entry point for you, but then there is an entry point to the north and to the east. Uh, and then additionally, uh, there are three rooms inside, um, along with a large kind of open floor plan. The yellow marks are windows. Um, okay, so would I have enough time to kind of talk to the team real quick about a plan? Yeah. Absolutely. Um, you know, you're you're uh, currently kind of going down through the levels. You're just getting out of uptown. You know, you're getting probably in like suburbia at this point. So you still have a little bit of a ways to go. You're about halfway there. Okay. So, um, all right, guys. I think we should go into this with at least some semblance of a plan. Uh, you know, perhaps I can try to talk to them. But while I'm doing that. Uh, I what skills does everyone have that we can kind of use? You know, someone, a sniper that can get in position or, you know, someone, you know, what, what is everyone kind of bringing to the table? Um, I'll start with uh, Silver. I'm pretty sure you're the, the strength. No, that's uh, me. <laughs> like, oh, uh... I can't, what, I don't remember what your name is. I'm sorry. <laughs> Rauka, 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 put Rauka, it's the name, name of your squad. squad. <laughs> He's a yeah. bloody mascot. What am okay. I saying it wrong? What is Bill's name? Silver. Silver. That's what I said, isn't it? Yeah, but you yeah. said you didn't Silver. know what Perry's and... name was. No, I interrupted. No, I didn't. You. Oh, okay. My bad. Continue. Oh, that's why I was confused. I was like, yeah, Silver, you're the you're the strength of the team because you're the big. Right, and and Rauka right? Rauka interrupts and says, "No, he's not. I am." Okay. Now I see what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Uh, uh, okay. Like, uh, uh, well, if we if we storm in, the we risk losing the hostage, right? So right. So we don't want to start with that. We're going to need to negotiate, but set up a perimeter yes. such that there's a threat of us storming in, which makes them want to negotiate or hopefully help you negotiate, right? right. If you need, if you need a rifleman, uh, I got decent. I got decent. Grades and rifle. Um, so, oh, yeah. so um, I got I got to interject here, Reggie. So you're having this conversation with Silver, um, and Silver, you're you're trying to uh, articulate the need for setting up a perimeter and whatnot, but you have a knowledge of zero. Um, so basically, all that comes out is uh, surround them and smash them. Okay. Um, no, no ranks and tactics. Knowledge of zero. Um, again, you may be able, you may understand this, and you may have had the proper training, um, but you probably can't communicate it. And a charisma of one, um, so you will have a. I thought I, time. I thought I had tactics. I actually have tracking, but I can't read. 
Ah, yes, method acting. I love it. <laughs> so, so, saying, so, yeah, we, so I'll, I'll, I'll paraphrase. Uh, so we surround them. You talk. They surrender. <laughs> okay. Yeah, basically. So I think you know, having that. that plan is good. <laughs> I, while I'm talking, that uh, you you guys kind of you know set, set up some kind of just in case you know be you, ready. You need me to. Can you get into their car? If you need, I can get the high ground. Get me scope. Uh let yeah. you. Let us know what we're barging into before we decide to straighten them out, right? Yeah, some reconnaissance might be good. Yeah. Yes. Unlike most of my clan, I have some recon. I took some recon. Okay, so you have, uh, like... Wish for a whole week. Okay. So you can be kind of ready to snipe if needed, but I'm hoping it doesn't come to that. And uh, obviously, then that leaves the other two. Roka, yeah. what uh, what feels uh, do you feel you bring? Uh, hurting. Hurting. Hurt. Hurting. Hurting with a T. Oh, hurting. Or did you say hurting? Are you are you good with like? We might, you were need, hurting to, we might need to herd the hostage out of there. Right, or herd people away yeah. from the scene. That potentially do, could be, you know, yeah, to can, avoid yeah, problems. Yeah, I can do that too. Uh -huh. so basically, okay. uh, look good for the cameras. Uh, and, yep, yeah. But yeah. something else we should consider if they're doing this to uh, recruit the better we can uh, make them, or the worse we can make them look, the worse it works as a recruiting tactic. Aye. Ruin all credibility. That way they won't get the push. Stop the steal. <laughs> um, uh, additionally, Reggie, um, other bit of information on this map uh, is that um, this circular spot uh, right here here on the uh, map is a sewer entrance. So Ooh. that is where the drainage goes out into the sewers. Um, so there is presumably a way in and out through that. Okay, so that's more uh, Rauka's uh, area of expertise. Racist. Right? <laughs> 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 is not oh, okay. I guess you'll be taken to the skies. <laughs> that is not okay. What the bloody hell's wrong with you? But he would be going good going up through the sewer. Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying that he's good. He's good at sneaking. Yeah, that's what you were saying. Sneaking through waste. And then, uh, catch. What, uh, what role would, do you think you can... Or what would you like to do in this? So when these big meaty dudes get parts of them blown off, I reattach them so that we can either keep fighting or fight next week as well. Um, sound good? Maybe. Yeah, pretty much. What did you say? Oh, when uh, these guys like inevitably get parts of them blown off. I just help them regrow it. Oh. And then... Okay. You're a healer. Yeah. You're, yeah. Okay. All right. So as you, uh, as you're kind of tabulating your, your final bit of, um, game planning and whatnot, uh, the crawler pulls up to what would, um, you know, if you were looking at this, probably be like an area just outside the map, probably to the right of this um, abandoned building over here. Um, and then, yeah, of course, so we have the Yum Yum Gum Factory um, that's next to this. Um, all of the areas, so in addition, uh, other information that you gained, uh, the Stupid Cola um, Factory was uh, overtaken prior to the start of the day's shift. 
Uh, so there are no other civilians in there besides the uh, Third Eye News reporter. Uh, additionally, the other uh, Yum Yum Gum uh, was um, shut down um, because of the result, or because of the situation, uh, and the building was cordoned off. These tenements at the top and the bottom are effectively apartment buildings um, where people who kind of work in these areas uh, live. Those are still open, uh, active, and full of people. Um, yeah, so I probably want, like, is there a way we can communicate to Matt or the driver? Uh, yeah, it's, it's like an open, um, th thing. Yeah, so you can call through like a sliding thing. Yeah. Yeah, I just feel like, hey, drop us off over, uh, on the other side of that abandoned building and then just park, walking that out like that. He, uh, yeah, he nods. He's like, all right, got it. Got it. So he's going to drop you off at the aforementioned spot, and you want the um, crawler to pull up in that spot where the alleyway is. Yeah. Okay. Give them a hard time as possible if they're trying to get out quick. Got it. Getting an echo from somebody? So, not sure who that is. Uh, but as you go through, the vehicle pulls up, and the group of you get out. So let's go ahead and switch this over. Um, okay. Okay. I gotta make the window size big enough so I can use it. Okay. 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 All right, I'm going right, to pull up a little pull token, token for the, for the uh, uh, crawler. There you go. That'll work. That'll work. I want to I wanna view this, view but, this I but I can't. View what? View what? My little My avatar thing, little so, avatar I thing so I can it. toggle it. There we go. There we go. Is that better? Yes, it is. Oh, were you... Did it uh, load you in the... Uh, um, hit the up arrow, uh, and okay. it erases the progress. Gotcha. <laughs> All right. So yeah, the crawler drops you off, and then pulls up over here. Um, all right, so this is the current composition of the group. I don't know if you want to arrange yourself differently or where people are going to be going or whatnot. I can't actually see it anymore. It's all, like, weird. The map. The well, the map is, is it a, it's, it's you're at a street level view now, so you don't have the map anymore. You're actually out on the street, so it's probably going to be dark if you scroll through the map or zoom out a little bit. Right, and yeah. you should be able to see yourself. So you have, you're all right here. Yeah, no, it was there, and then hmm. it was there, and then something weird happened, and now it's like a weird. Blob. Can you try reloading roll twenty? See if that works. Can everybody I'm else going see to it reload okay? two. Yeah, I can see everything. I'm gonna reload two. Roll twenty is being slow. Okay. No problem. Slow rolling you? Yeah, I'm good. I got full control of my uh Yeah, like okay. my my avatar was moving like a snail. Okay. Go ahead and reload. Yeah, there weren't any windows on the side that faces the uh, abandoned building, right? No, the only uh, the that's only what, yeah. window is in the back of the building on this side. Right. right? Yeah, that's why. I, uh, okay. So the group of you get left off on the street. Well. Uh, Sabrina and Simon are reloading. Um, yeah. And it's, mm -hmm. again, pretty quiet um, at this point. You all good? You see the map okay? Mm, getting good movement? No. Good. Yep. Yeah. Sabrina, you okay? No. Okay. 
You still getting the same thing where it's like blurry or? Yes. Um, it's like, okay. It finally showed up. It, it was just wonky. Okay. There, I don't know. No problem. I mean, that's my first time using the map in a live setting, so bound to be hiccups. But you can see yourself now. Got your tokens all there, respectively. Everybody good to go? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, let's do this. All right. So what's the plan? Uh, is it, um, is it Reggie, what was the plan? Is this all blacked out? Is that supposed to be? Yeah, so yeah. this is your current line okay. of sight. This is your field of vision. From I'm just where making you're sure. Not a problem. Because originally I didn't see anything, so... No, okay. okay. Yeah, it might have just been that you're for a reason to, um, it didn't load up for you. Or it might have been like in a zoomed in in a section where it was all black and couldn't see it. No. no. Okay. No, it was, I don't know. But it's working now. It's all good. All good. Cool. Uh, yeah, so is there, did they tell me that, or is there a way that I'm able to patch in and speak to the person while um, the others can? So let's go ahead and do another computer roll. So basically, um, you're going to look to see if you can um, gain access to their comm channel at this point. Um, in light of that, and move that, where you would not to be able to do that, you would probably have to just knock on the door. Can you explain the rolling? Like, I know I did it, but I'm just... Sure. So what, you roll... So what you're rolling is you are rolling um, a number of d10s. The first d10 you're rolling is your success die, uh, and this determines whether or not you succeed or you fail. So you roll a success die, you add in your bonus. If it is above the target number for the difficulty, uh, then you succeed. If it's below it, then you fail. Uh, every other die that you roll, which would be the uh, number of your skill plus one. So if you had, you have what, a two in computers or a three? Yes, two. Okay, so you would be rolling three skill dice, and these effectively determine if you do succeed, how much you succeed by, and, and how successful you are. So if we were using the example of what you're trying to currently do, um, then you would be looking potentially at, um, you know, if you only succeeded but didn't succeed on any skill die, uh, then you may be looking at... Um, Maybe you can get a few words in here or there, or it's very kind of choppy and you kind of lose something in the communication. Um, you know, if you succeed on, you know, one or two skill die, um, then you have a open channel of communication. You know, if you have a success of three, then, you know, there could be something beyond that. And I'm not going to tell you about, um, but that is basically no, no, how it, yeah. So you're going to be rolling your success die, skill die equal to your skill plus one, and then the success die determines whether or not you succeed or fail. And for failure, if you fail in on your success die and all of your skill die, then you have uh, you know a terrible failure where it's some you know very bad circumstance happens. Um, other than that, there's no real margin of failure. So, um, but given your, your and the bonus basically, the bonus is what you're adding into each of those die rolls. Those. So should I be putting that on it, and you just don't add it to the first one? Um, no, you. so you add it to all of them. So you add it to each of them individually. So if we look at your last roll here, where you had, you know, 10, 5, 10, 9, and your bonus is 8, correct? For a computer? Yeah. Okay. So then your uh, success, then your numbers would have been 18, 13, 18, and 17 would have been your individual rolls. So, um, right. So do you want me to put the plus 8? I I don't think you can do it to like each individual die like it just it doesn't like roll 20 doesn't formulate it out or I haven't figured out how oh. to do it yet so I think the best way to probably do it is just roll them and then you know we'll add them in in our heads um just because it'll be you know it, that'll be oh. the easier way to do it okay so you roll 40 10 uh so for the so the Five result. That was uh, that's a thirteen, correct? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then you had two, 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 you had thirteen, ten, fifteen, 
18. All right. So you had you succeed and you succeeded on two of your skill dice. Uh, so you you know you kind of out in the street working off of your clamshell, uh, and then you manage to um, patch through uh, into the uh, f you you get on the same um, frequency channel as the uh, ninth division soldiers. You you know there's a little um, program that pops up that shows that the the feed is active you can't hear any communication back and forth were you to have gotten three successes then you would have been able to hear the communication between them individually um so you could have spied on them um but in this case you can just communicate out to them so you have established that channel okay so I can talk to them, but they I won't know if they respond? No, they'll be able to respond to you. It's just that you don't... It, it's basically like you're another person on there. You're like an individual that they can potentially communicate to on their channels. It's just that you can't okay. eavesdrop on their conversation. So you will have a two-way line of, of conversation. Uh, you just will not have... Uh, okay. You know, two successes will get you that. Like a one success or, or zero successes um, or a zero skill dice success probably would have just gotten you like a one-way... And you have a back and forth now because you had two successes on there. Uh, before you do that, we should probably get off the street. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that I, I, I also need to move into position while I yeah. get that ready. Just out of sight from people. All right. Um, hold on. Um, I would like to. I would like to roll. I would like to figure out a good sniper's nest for myself. Okay. Um, Is that thing I can do? Let me see what you got here. Um, I'm just taking a look at your skill sheet now. Um, so you don't have anything in tactics, um, but you have a decent enough rank and rifle. Uh, so I would say based on your, your general combat knowledge, um, while you don't have an excellent... Um, you know, knowledge of things, you would figure that there is only one window into the building, which is over here. Uh, so if you were to get presumably into one of the floors, um, you know, of slightly above on this tenement block here, you would probably be able to see into the building, um, and get at least a sniper vantage point through this window. Okay, um, can I just go up there, or do you want me to roll a stealth and hide? So, I would say because you're looking to, um, which way are you going to go? If you're going to go around the right side here, um, then you can probably make your way over, and then I would probably just have you make, uh, a stealth roll, um, to kind of set yourself up in the window, uh, probably actually a hide roll, uh, instead. A uh, hide roll to make sure that you don't get spotted while in your sniper position. Um, if you wanted to go a different way, where you're passing in front of the window or anything like that, then you'd have to roll a stealth to sneak by. So. Okay, I'll go the way where I just need to roll a hide. Okay. And uh, just let me double check. Just let me double check because it's not liking me having roll twenty and my sheet up at the same time. Okay. Now we now we now we roll skill. Rank plus one. Uh, so yeah, you're rolling. Uh, it's it's so you roll a success die. So that's a, a d10, and then skill die equal to your skill plus one. So you're doing hide. So you would roll uh, three dice total. So you'd be rolling a d10 for your success die, and then two d10 for your skill dice. You'd be adding five to each of those. Aye aye. And I'm gonna go ahead and put you into the position okay so um so i got a 13 a 14 and a 6 okay uh 13 14 6 uh so you manage to uh go through you go up to the second floor of the of the tenement um you kind of eyeball the best viewpoint um you kind of abscond uh a couple uh, that lives in the tenement um, and then set up in their window uh, and you can see into the building um, you know and that has changed on the uh, lighting setup of the map um, so this is the advantage that you get of the inside of the facility 
Okay, and uh, do we have like um, earpiece communicators, cell phone? How are we doing this? You have radio communications with the other members of the squad. All right, in position. I'll, I'll skip the accent for now. All right, in <laughs> position. Um, eyes on the window. Zero hostiles. Um, actually, uh, you get the slight body parts of two people. One standing behind Scratch the Scratch that. One standing. Partial. Partial on two. Partial on two hostels. One by the window. One towards the back. Left. My left. Okay. Am I next to a door or like a loading dock, or is that just like a? Uh, for you, uh, Silver, where you're at, this is just a corner of the building. Um, where you're standing right now. That's just the okay. corner of the building across the street. So the loading dock's by this truck? Yeah, so the loading dock would be over here. Alright, then there. I'm going to go open. Okay. I, uh, can, I can stealth over there if need be. Um, there is no uh, windows uh, through this way, so I don't think that it's necessary to. Um, Alright, so I'm hidden as best I can behind here. Okay. So waiting okay. the order to move in. Okay, so you're taking cover behind that uh, that spot. Okay. Um, so I'll say, uh, I'm uh, behind the truck. Let me know when I'm going in. Okay. Um, so, Rauka, what are you doing? Uh, <clears throat> I guess I'm reluctantly looking around for the sewer entrance. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, uh, not that hard. <laughs> all right uh so there is no sewer entrance here um on uh, this part of the street um there is actually you figure um that there would be one inside the yum yum gum factory um so how quickly you make your way over to there is entirely up to you uh i guess i i i kind of mosey <laughs> unless unless uh otherwise instructed by leader okay so you kind stop, of stop and chat with silver <laughs> what do you say hey, uh, what you doing? <laughs> cool, <good job. laughs> silver, silver just apparently ignores you uh patch what are you doing as your squad uh, all completely splits up <laughs> yeah, we're having dialogue i was planning on uh Everyone's staying together with an ability to patch them up, but I guess not. So I guess I'm going to go stick with, uh, I'll stick with, uh, yeah, Silver's going to likely get more spotlight in this. So I'd like to also be in that spotlight. Okay. The biggest one to hide behind. Um, yep. And uh, as you are moving around, you do notice that there's a couple, um, third eye drones that are uh, fluttering about um so like one like here there's like another over here um that are kind of just you know filming and and taking stock of the situation which again considering um this is a third eye reporter that was kidnapped and um their third eye coverage was listed on the vpn not surprising to you okay uh everyone in position um do we want to get reggie's call through yeah. Okay. Uh, so, Reggie, All right. establish communications. What do you say? Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, what the fuck? Who is this? You hear um, through the other end of the comms. Uh, doesn't really matter who I am. I just uh, want to see what's going on in there. Maybe there's uh, something we could work out. Who are you? Are you Dark Knight? Uh, out of character, what is that again? Dark Knight is a is effectively the primary enemy of Slay Industries. Uh, they are a rival company uh, who um, 
is basically a very, very well-funded terrorist organization that uh, has never been able to be truly beaten by Slay Industries and can cause them problems at a variety of time. It is not uncommon for other um, small groups or enemies of Slay, uh, soft companies, um, units like the Ninth Division, cult members, things like that, to work in tandem with Dark Knight, potentially. Okay, so but that's not the group that they're from. No, they're from the Ninth Division. They're very small potatoes compared to Dark Knight. Okay. But he's asking if you're from, if that's where yeah. you are from. Might be. Um, what? Uh, what's your goal here? Uh, he uh, says, uh, well, if you've been paying attention to the news feed, you'd already know that. So, uh, unless you have some sort of interesting information from me, don't waste my fucking time. Well, I do know, um, Mr. This is, am I talking to Allman? Yes. Mr. Allman, I, I do know a little bit about you, um, and, you know, it seems unfair what happened that uh, you were forced to resign from your position when clearly you didn't really do anything wrong. Uh, you know, maybe there's something we can work out. Uh, you don't necessarily have to do this, I don't think. Do Risking what? Your... Keep, the, uh, keep the hostage. Uh, maybe if you join us, you wouldn't have to go to such lengths to raise ranks. Um, he, uh, he kind of pauses at that. Um, give me a persuasion check. Um, so go ahead and give me a roll for that. I'll just, uh, yeah, I'll just do it the same way. Yeah, it's go the ahead. Same. Mm -hmm. But it's be, uh, plus seven. Yes. Okay. Oh. Huh. Whoops. Sorry. I did that. I did that wrong. It's okay. Because I have a copy paste. There. So plus seven. No. Um. So as you're kind of communicating with them, um, you, you, you sense you're kind of starting to lose him because. If you were trying to present yourself as a Dark Knight operative, um, Dark Knight has done far more extreme things than kidnapping a Third Eye News reporter. Uh, so your story's not starting to match up. It doesn't seem like he's quite caught on yet exactly, but um, the, ch the tone you, you are putting through will need to change um, if you're planning on um, convincing him that you are not a Slay operative. And he's like, listen, if you want to if you want to negotiate a sale here of our pretty little reporter, uh, I'd be interested in that potentially. But otherwise, uh, I have uh, an audience to speak to. So, uh, again, I ask you, give me something useful or go fuck yourself. I think that you were meant for more. I think that uh, you can have much more interesting, exciting missions than just a simple hostage situation that's boring. I think if you were to join us, you could do a lot more things. Okay. Um, so as Reggie is having this conversation um, with Ullman, uh, what is the rest of the group doing? Uh, <clears throat> I think I'm uh, trying to find the sewer entrance and waiting for a signal. Okay. Um, Rauka, you have found the entrance to the sewer inside the Yum Yum Gum Factory. Um, do you plan on going inside? Yeah. Okay. Um, I I was staring at the map. I just noticed one of those figures move. I'm going to see if I can move a little bit in my spot, maybe roll stealth if need be, to get eye of sight on the dude that just moved. Moved. Okay, so are yeah. you trying to move uh, over to the left or to the right? Okay. Um, go ahead and give me a stealth check for that. To the to my right. Yep, gotcha. I saw the ping, so you're good. Okay, 3d10. Wait a minute. Stealth is dex. 
All right, so it's 3d10 plus 5. I need to update my sheet later. Whoops. Okay. Epic fail. Um, well, so you failed. So you had a failure, um, but you're only... You had your other two were successes, so you don't, and ones don't mean anything. Like, it's not like you're not botching on a one. Um, but uh, you do, um, you know, as you're kind of shifting position, so you do get the move. Um, as you, as you shift over, um, you uh, notice that um, one of them um, pops through the door um, outside. Um, and starts kind of looking in your direction um, and keeps keeps an eye on you um, and stands outside. So this dude obviously can see me or he just happens to be looking at the floor I'm on. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's pretty obvious that he's looking in your direction like he saw something he didn't like. Uh, after a little bit, he does go back in and kind of like get a little bit more cover behind this window. Um, so he can keep an eye on you, but you are being watched. Um, were you to try and move again, you would probably be spotted unless this guy got distracted and he might be communicating that to the other members. Um, as you, as you kind of move into spot and you see him come, one of the guys goes away and the other one moves out a little bit. Um, as he is doing that, Alex. um... You, uh, Reggie, you hear, like, who the fuck is that? Uh, Cro across the street, second floor. Who is that? So, of course I'm not here alone. Um, in order to recruit, recruit you, I needed to bring more than one person, of course. Uh, if you to cooperate with us let her go we i will uh send you coordinates of where we can get up and we can do a proper recruitment i don't know the right wording for that okay i mean that, that's uh okay for the communication um he uh he's like let her go like it's like listen you want to negotiate something you come in here Negotiate face to face. Don't hack into our channels and send people to surround the building. Unless, and then you hear kind of like the click of a weapon. He's like, and then you hear kind of, the, of a whimper of a female voice. He says, uh, unless you're not somebody who is interested in trading for this reporter, in which case that's going to be a different conversation entirely. Oh, well, of course we're interested, but we would, if we had just walked right in, you might have tried to shoot at my people, and I can't have that. We gotta do this the right way. Well then, come on in. Stay, um, by, stay by the bloody window. <laughs> um... All right, so we'll uh, you know we'll give you some time to think about that, um, and we will move to uh, Rauka, who has entered the sewer. Uh, so we're gonna move to him. Uh, it might it's probably gonna appear dark for the rest of you um, because he is the only one down here. So uh, Rauka, if you want to communicate what you're seeing to everybody else, that is gonna be important because they cannot see. Okay, um, I'm, I'm probably talking a lot. Like, okay. this is my MTV Cribs, basically. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, oh, look at all this stuff people throw away. I can't believe this. Just pick up random garbage. I'm like, this doesn't look like exactly like where I grew up, but it's pretty similar. Oh. Okay. So as you round the corner, uh, you see um, around uh, where there's a ladder um, down to the sewer, uh, there is a large pool of what, what first looks like blood to you. Um, but upon further examination, it looks like it is um, soda syrup, essentially, um, that has mixed with uh, the water down here. Um, so, uh, and through it, you hear the chittering of about 20 or so rats um, that have, uh, that are feasting and uh, drinking the uh, proverbial uh, Kool-Aid. 
Okay. Um, I duck back around the corner and I, I say, uh, there's a bunch of rats down here. Uh, what do you want me to do? Uh, rats? Yeah. You need help? I don't know. I mean, there's rats, but... If, I'm more... If... I want to get the hostage. Okay, then maybe ignore them. Do okay. you get past them fine? Uh, should I... Do I need to roll anything to get past them? It'll be a stealth check. Alright. Uh, yeah. Aryan stealth. The rots are no joke down here. It's pretty good. Um, <laughs> they eat right through your alarm my bonus, clock. My bonus is three. No, that was a roach. The rots oh. eat the roaches. <laughs> your, your bonus is three? Yeah. Uh, so it's a plus three to it. Um, hang on. Uh, so you're making your way. You want to kind of like go to the ladder, uh, essentially, and get up around them. Yeah. Uh, ten for that group of rats is not going to do it. Um, so you kind of make your way over to there, uh, and you... Uh, most of them are still not paying attention to you, um, but a couple have started to um, feel threatened that you're, especially being a carrion, um, they might have seen things like you before, and they assume that you're here to take some of their dinner. Uh, so they kind of, like, square up with you. Um, probably a group of <laughs> five five or so rats. Um, not, you know, yeah, yay big. I mean, like, you know, mid, mid-sized, um, you know larger than than a regular rat like probably a little bit smaller than a small dog each yeah okay cat sized rats yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Oops. fair can i um try to like intimidate them like scare them off before uh ah uh, yeah i think that's fair Seven. Oh, no. You have four in intimidate. Two. Oh, okay, that was all right. The second one. I thought it was. You thought you were rolling seven dice there. Your bonus is seven to your intimidate. Yeah. All right. Um. Yeah. You. You kind of like lean forward and you like let off like a hiss and a growl uh, at them, um, which they seem to understand um, pretty well. Uh, and they kind of just disperse. They skitter off. Um, the other, f the other 15 or so are still there and still kind of just mulling through it. Um, they really haven't, they're not paying attention to you right now. So you're at the ladder, um, right. for the, uh, stupid cola factory. Okay. Uh, I want to like get as close to the hatch as I can. Okay. And, like see if I can hear anything, but mostly I'm, I'm waiting for... Uh, Reggie's signal. Okay. Um, so we'll... Uh, what's your detect? I'm just seeing if there's a... Uh, two. Uh, plus five. So I'd say that um, you don't need to roll on this one because you're, you know, you just have position, you climb up, you kind of listen. Um, and you hear some conversation back and forth, um, mainly around uh, the... Um, there's a couple uh, Ninth Division guys who are by the uh you can tell around there somewhere um you can also see just out of a little bit of the um out of the entrance there is like uh, next to the sewer there's like a platform um that leads like upward like up a level um and there's a guy standing at the top of that um kind of um you know keeping watch or from like more of a high ground position okay um but you hear a couple of guys talking um, who, uh, say to themselves, um, like, uh, Almond's talking to somebody and there's someone across the street. I think, I think fucking the, I think the ops are here. We need to be on our fucking guard. And the guy's like, let him come. That's what we're, that's what we're here for. It's like, fuck yeah, let's do this. Um, um and then one of the, one of them walks away. You hear like footsteps uh, kind of going through, like away from the, uh, sewer. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to send a text to the rest of the party. <laughs> Just hanging off the thing. <laughs> pulls out his cell phone. 
<laughs> my my uh, ringtone goes off while my <laughs> just... <laughs> yeah, it's like uh, Trigger Happy TV from that <laughs> Hello! I'm just screaming. Yeah. What? <laughs> no, it's rubbish. I'm on a stealth mission. Yarp. <laughs> 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 Alright, so yeah, you get the you get the text message that pops through in the chat feed. Um you get, you know, like uh, near um on your feed. It actually um um it's like a text to speech thing, so you hear like kind of a more robotic voice um that says Bad guys know we here. Oh my background surprise. I say uh, we're ready to move. We doing this, lots? Um, so, Reggie, you hear this uh, through on your communication as Allman has said, you know, has asked for you to, you know, come in and talk. It seems like the rest of your squad is planning on doing some sort of entry at this point. Oh, I, I'm waiting Reggie's signal, but I, I tell her that I'm ready. Yeah, I know, but you're, you're, but you're coordinating an entrance. Okay, so. Yeah. Um, um uh, Paul? Yes. Okay. Uh, what I'm gonna do is kind of risky, but I am being watched, and I want to stop that. Um, what's around me? Um, so you're in a person's apartment. Uh, so you're like propped up in a windowsill right now. Um, so around you, there's like a cabinet. Um, there's some like living room furniture. You're in this person's living room. Um, as they're just kind of like, they've kind of shuffled off into another room. Um, just to try and avoid you. Uh, is there anything in particular you're looking for? Uh, I'm looking for a stick or something that I can prop my hat up so it looks like I'm sitting with my back to the wall. Okay. With my hat poking up over the window. Okay. And then I can, like, sneak around to another window and keep my vantage point. Okay. Um, I would say that would probably be along the lines of a stealth check. Um, again, because you're trying to, you know, divert somebody into looking some way while sending them another way. Um, let me just take a look over the skills here really quick and just make sure nothing else fits better. Um, yeah, I don't believe so. Uh, I think, yeah, that is just going to be a stealth check if you wanted to do that. Okay, like, I should have done this when I started. Oh, well. Hey, 11. Okay. Um, so as you, um, so you prop your hat up, um, and you, um, you move. So do you leave this apartment and go into a completely different one? Yeah. Okay. Um, can you ping on, um, where, uh, on the map, like what position you want to go to, like of the other areas? Um, the map went black. Did it. Can you just move me? Oh, yeah. okay. I got it. Yeah, like, no, no. I got gotcha. you. I'll just uh, move. Just, just, just move me two or three spaces left. Okay, so I'll move you over to this area. Um, so you kind of uh, you get out. You go to the you know the apartment next door, um, and similar thing. This is just one guy in there. Um, you leave your your hat kind of propped up, uh, and then get in. Um, as you do. Um, Rauka, you from the sewers uh, hear, again, the guys talking, um, and one of them says to the other, it's like, um, guy across the street moved. Be careful. God damn it! <laughs> uh, um, Alright, yeah, so... I, I, I text again. I wanna... Alright, Reggie, I wanna ahead. try one more thing. Yep. One more thing before we... And then I'll give you the signal. Okay. Uh... So, I'm going to say to him, all right, I'm going to level with you here. We're really only trying to recruit you. We don't want the others to know. <laughs> okay. Uh, my team has stolen sleigh uniforms or armor, whatever. Mm -hmm. So that we can fool your team into thinking that's what we are. And in reality, we're really here to recruit you. So if you work with me, you would be well rewarded. 
Okay. Um, give me a, another persuasion check. That's mm. a plus seven. Okay. Um, so the uh, the guy is like, you take my whole unit or you take no one. This is your last chance. Roll out of here. Or we start firing. I send signal. <laughs> Because it's the simplest. <laughs> okay, okay. Do I have do I have eyes on the boss? Uh, n not currently. The only person What's that it? you can see is the guard who's been who's been watching your area. Well, showtime. I guess I'm going to with my since I'm since I'm ripping on rush. Yep. I have an extra combat action. I'm going to aim. I'm going to use my combat free rush action to aim and then fire. Okay. Um, I think because we're not in combat yet, I can just go ahead and give that to you. Um, and then this will kind of be the, the thing that starts combat. Um, all right. So are you going to use that aim to give you a plus one skill success or a plus one to your success die? So basically, you can have be more likely to hit or be more damaging if you hit the person. Uh, okay. Um, do I have do I have a bonus from just watching this dude this whole time? Um, because you had to reposition recently, I would say no. Um, and uh, okay. also, you were more uh, you were more focused on surveilling as opposed to lining up a shot on this guy because you were trying to stay out of this guy's field of vision. So I would say you get the one bonus for aiming for your, you know, what you just stated. So you're actually, whereas before you were just kind of keeping an eye on the window, now you're actually like setting up, aiming, boom, off you go. So that's going to be, you're going to get the one aim. So you either get a plus one to your success die um, on the roll, or you will get a automatic skill success. Uh, so if you succeed, then you will deal more damage potentially, or you can target where you want to hit him. I'm going to be risky and uh, target this guy's neck so he can't talk. <laughs> okay, so the way that targeted rolls go um, is that it's going to be based on a margin of success. Um, Slay Industries doesn't actually have individual call shots anymore. So what you would need to do is we would call this a headshot. Um, and I can, you know, I can, we can, we can work out the results of that. Um, for that, you are going to need four or more skill die successes. Um, so for you, if you are rolling, um, just taking a look at your sheet here. So you have a rifle of three, um, assuming that you got a, if you did a plus one to your uh, skill die from the, um, aim of your rifle, uh, you would be rolling, uh, you would get one automatic success right off the bat if you were to hit. So you would need to succeed on three more skill die and then you could potentially hit him in the head. So... Um, if you're looking to take a shot at him, uh, it's, again, it's up to you. I mean, you'd be rolling four skill die for this roll anyways. You would need to either succeed on all of them. I would say that if you're trying to hit a specific body part, you're probably better off using that aim as an automatic success. Um, additionally, if you want, um, you can use your two actions to aim twice. Um, if you were to do that, then combat would start at that point, um, and then you would not basically get the first shot on them, potentially, uh, depending on how the initiative works out. Uh, I mean, well, um, you know what, I'll take the time to aim twice, that way on my next turn, I can just blow the back of this guy's head out or the front of it okay okay so you go ahead and you uh you settle in um and you uh you look to aim um as you do um you hear uh a uh call through or call out through uh, rauka you specifically hear it of like uh, uh we're being targeted everyone in position uh, and now we will go into initiative for uh, this combat. So everybody go ahead and roll a d10, add in their initiative on their character sheet. 
Uh, and then I'll go ahead and um, roll for our shivers. Let's see, can I mark? It's kind of blue. Oof. Great way to start the day. Oops. It is not my day. Uh, I just nope. got our hostage killed. One's all around. Lovely. Okay. Uh, I'm just setting up the different... Um, I'm color coding the uh, Ninth Division guys here, just so we can um, easily determine them and for purposes of initiative combat, things like that. Purple. And then for the sergeant, uh, we'll give him... Alright, purple, yellow. Okay. Okay, so we've got all your initiatives listed there. I'm just going to go ahead and roll up for these guys. I'm just going to do them left to right. So. Okay, and now I just got to pull up the turn tracker here, put the information in. Turn tracker. Okay. And just just gotta look up their initiative quickly. So their initiative is plus four. Okay. So go ahead and add these guys in. Everybody in here. Okay. And got Rauka off to the side, but I'll you know, note that he's underneath there. Okay, so just marking initiative here. All right, and let's see here. So Silver got a four. Patch got a eight, nine. Hi. Jesus, you're man. friggin' fast. Fair I'm Shrek. A, I'm on 13, man. I don't What's... know what that other role is. Oh, I'm sorry, 13, my bad. Or wait, yeah, yeah 13, okay. 13. I don't, yeah, I don't know why I rolled that other one. Okay, it no problem. Wrong. Fair Shrek. Uh, you got a 7, right? Yeah. Uh -oh. Alright, uh, and Rauka, you got a 9. Alright. Uh -huh. Oh, I actually got hit enter for that. Uh, nine. Oh my goodness. All right, fine. That's that's annoying. Give me one second. There we go. And Rauka again. Oh, I gotta. Well, we're waiting for them to go talk back and forth. Can I uh, say something quick to Silver? Okay. Uh, yeah, so I just like, so how good are you at throwing? Uh, I'm all right. Why? And I pull one of the, the, the concussion grenades I have out of my bag and pass it to him. Mm, good call. Okay. Yeah, hold it. I keep the other one in my hand. Do what? I keep the other one in my hand. Okay. And also completely uh, aware of where the cameras are, so I'm trying to make sure that I look cool doing it. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> okay. 
So I'm going to just go have to go ahead. So the way that uh, combat works in Slay Industries is that um, you actually declare your action in low to high. So you actually have to state what you're going to do first. Uh, and then it executes in top to bottom. So you actually get to know what they're going to do um, before they end up doing it. Um, so the first is a ninth Division, division Soldier um, who is currently out of sight. Um, he is going to hold... I guess I should probably only say the ones you can actually see currently, so I'll go ahead and do that. Okay, so there's that one. Uh, next up. All right. Okay. Set in the turn order here. Okay. Okay. So, of the group of you, uh, Patch, what are you going to be doing this turn? Um, I'm going to try to rush up to the door. Okay, rush like to the door. Up. Fair Shrek. Uh, I'm going to shoot him. Okay. Uh, Rauka. Uh, <clears throat> would this be the right time, uh, uh, combat order-wise, to do a feat? Um, if you, you, this would be the time to state what you were planning on doing. Okay, I'm going to do another. You're going to do another? All right, cool. Uh, so explain what that is. Uh, okay, so it's named after uh, an operative named Arnold Nutter. Um, sort of like a, a Leroy Jenkins um, scenario. Uh, this feat may be used when bursting into a room or environment alone with no prior knowledge of what may be inside. A uh, character gets a single charge or ranged attack action before the first combat round begins. Hmm. <laughs> Okay. So, and he got his, his fried chicken at the end. <laughs> Alright, so Rauka is pulling off another. Um, the uh, blue 9th Division uh, guy uh, is going to move. Um, and then Silver. Uh, so I'm going to try the door to the loading dock. Is that like a lift door? Or like a... It is, it's a loading dock door. It is um, about four feet off the ground. Um, so you're going to have difficulty opening it and getting underneath, but you're, what, seven, seven something in terms of your height? Yeah, I'm pretty tall. Right. So yeah, you, you can negotiate it, but it's, um, it's probably going to take a full turn for you to get in and do so. Like that would be all you would be doing. Cause what's your, um, movement speed? Um, so you're three closing six rushing. Closing, yeah. You are a slow boy. Well, what I want to do is throw the grenade in the hole. All right. So you just want to push the door open. I would say still, so your rushing is six. So in order to okay. get to the door, you're going to have to move five. So that is going to be your whole um, turn if you're going to be doing that. Okay. So. That's what I'm doing. Okay. So you go ahead and move over. I'll say, you know, probably it takes a little bit to navigate around this uh, APC too. Um, but you move over to this door. So since it's, now we're going in reverse order, um, you move. You, you, know, you position. We're actually executing now. Um, the 9th Division um, Blue Unit. Um, he moves to here. Um, he moves to there and he fires. So he's going to be behind cover. Fair Shrek, you're still going to be able to shoot him. Um, but it is going to be a little bit more difficult, um, because he is now under, he is now in, um, a larger amount of cover than he was previously. Um, 
Well, I aimed twice, so that should be that mm -hmm. should count for something. Yeah, and actually, I didn't I didn't declare his fire before, so he is just you know he sees you lining up. And he's more concerned about getting a little bit to a little bit more safety than he had before. So that's going to be uh, his. So boop boop. Um, so Rauka, you're gonna you're gonna burst onto the scene. Um, you really don't have prior knowledge of it, so that's nope. fine. Um, so you're gonna pop up here, bam, um, and there are. Two guys who are, you know, off to your right. Um, there's another guy who's on a platform above you. Um, that's him. Um, and, you know, you're able to see what you're currently able to see. The one by the door, too. So, um, rushing does have to be a straight line. Um, yep. Does it have to be... You have to... Because mm, char for charging, that's more than three meters, right? Technically. Uh, a great question. Hang on. I'll see if I can look it up real quick. Am I able to do anything? Or... Oh yeah, I didn't. I didn't put you in there. I'm sorry. Um, what was your initiative yeah, roll? Sixteen. Oh fuck. Oh man. I'm sorry. Um, then yeah. I'll put you in. Hang on. Um, for some. Oh, probably because you weren't. You were way off here on the map. I didn't get you added in. But um, so yeah. um, pause for a second, Rauka. Um, all right. So Reggie's. In the future, going to be at the at the top of the order here. Um, all right, Reggie, what are you planning on doing? I mean, is it possible that since I've kind of already hacked in their comms, I can like try to mess with that somehow, or like? So you're going to like look to line? like disrupt their communications, essentially? Yeah, yeah. Um, I would say so, but it's probably going to take you multiple turns to do so. Right. Um, probably looking around. I would say you'd probably need at least 20 seconds to do so. Um, so you're probably talking about four rounds of activity to do that. Okay. I mean, because uh, I'm I mean, not really in a position to do much else at the right. moment. Other I mean, than... if you want to stay out of the fight, then, you know, that's fine. Um, it's just that that'll take, you know, additional... It's basically giving you what's called an auxiliary action. So you're kind of just doing, like, an extra action, you know, but it will take you some time to do, but then you should be able, you know, theoretically to do it. Probably wouldn't even be a roll. Like, I'm just like, that's, that's what you're doing. That is, you're spending your time in combat doing that. Yep. Okay. I, I think that's what he would logistically be doing, especially on a first mission like this. Got it. No problem. Okay. okay. Um, so I'm just going to look up charge real quick here. So charge. See. Charge when a combatant starts their attack at least three meters from an opponent and moves up to their rushing speed, uh, plowing full force into their target. The, the charging combatant must have a line of sight to the target at the start of the action. Uh, charging gives an opponent the potential to inflict additional damage. Uh, it, so you do need to move at least three meters, but it does not need to be in a straight line uh, necessarily. So um, were you to want to charge theoretically blue would probably be the best option depending on what your charging speed is so seven. you're you're rushing a seven so yeah you could get to him and you could um try and attack him um what kind of hatch is it is it just like a standard manhole cover essentially it, yeah can i throw that can you throw it <laughs> yeah um yeah. i would say it's it's cool, and I would I would say that you could use it as like a shield to bash them. But because you uh, nuttered, um, it is a melee combat action. You must oh, do. Oh, you can you can take a ranged attack. Can you? Yeah. So you can either charge can or take. Either, yeah, either charge or take a ranged attack. Um. Yeah. All right. And I think that's that's fair. And then let me say. So you're gonna get a single charge or ranged attack action before his first combat round begins. Yeah. Um. Uh, okay. So you okay? Gotcha. For the first combat round, because so that was actually supposed to be the start of that. Okay. Well, logistically, it doesn't make a huge difference. Um. Yeah. So, um, you're gonna do it to the blue, blue guy. Uh, no. Um. Now, when I when I first pop out, is there time to kind of look around and see the hostage, or I just don't I just don't see it. Um, I mean, you don't you don't see the hostage currently from where you're standing, anyways. Okay. Okay. Uh, in that case, all you uh, see is guys surrounding, you know, like right. all around you, above and to the sides. Okay. 
Um, I think I'm just going to throw it at green. Okay, so you're going to go ahead and throw it at green. Yeah. Um, so I will say, uh, let's see. All right, well, go ahead and give me a throw, um, throw skill check. So bonus of six. Okay. So you succeed, but you do not deal any additional damage. Um, but you do hit him. Um, because ten's the target. So you roll the seven, a two, and a three. Uh, so with that, I'm going to go ahead and give that a similar stat to... Um, we're going to call that a general unpowered melee weapon. So we're going to do... 1d10 minus 4 with a minimum damage of 1. What's your strength? 5. 5. Uh, so I'll add plus 1 to that because this is a, a thrown attack. So um, 1d5 and 1d10. I'm going to say minus 4. So actually minus 3 then because you're getting a plus 1 to the damage. All right, so yeah, you throw it. Um, it dinks off the side of his armor, um, and it deals to him two damage. Uh, and any armor damage on the no, because um, it's kind of meant to take the stuff. So you spring out of there, uh, and you whip the um, manhole cover, which is actually like more like a grate, so it's not uh, like full like super heavy, yeah. um, but it is uh, enough to kind of pop off the side of him. Um, he kind of staggers off to the side. Uh, and then that's your action. Yep. Okay. Uh, fair Shrek. Okay, so I have two aim on this guy, and he has cover. So what's that math lead up to? Okay, well, so are you going to be using the aim for additional skill uh, dice, or are you going to be uh, looking to do extra? So in heavy cover, is going to be negative two to your success die roll. Um, so, depending on what you want to do oh, for your aim. I'm just going to negate his cover, then. Okay, so you're just firing at him straight out. Yep. Okay, so go ahead and give me, uh, the rifle check. And add in your bonuses to that. Are you firing a single shot or multi-fire, like burst fire? Single. Okay. Then you go ahead and give me the roll. Eleven. Okay. So, 11, and then you had, um, so anything above a 10 is a success. So, you got plus 7 to the roll, then? Yep. Okay, so you so had... So, three successes. So, well, so you have one success, on, you, you succeed, and then you had two skill successes as well. Um, so, yeah. you, um, you can do an additional two damage, or you can hit his left arm. Uh, gonna hit his left arm. Maybe okay. he'll move and I can see his head. Okay. So, just to give you an idea of, let's see, what that does. I believe that's gonna, if he's holding a weapon in that arm, it's gonna cause him to drop it or not be able to use, uh, use a weapon with that arm. Um, so, let's see here. Just going through the combat rules quick. Damage. It's page 115. Okay. So. Cushion. Let's up quick. All right, hit the arm. Um, so hits the arm, inflicts damage as normal. If the target is holding a weapon with the relevant arm, they immediately disarmed. Um, if they're not holding a weapon, attack causes the target to lose at least two hit points. They also receive a wound to the arm and suffer the following penalties. Okay, so first things first, let's determine our damage. Um, so the damage for a Fen AR uh, is going... 1d10 plus 3. Okay, so go ahead and roll that. Wow, okay. Alright, uh, so 1d10 plus range. 
Do I actually disarm him? Uh, yeah, no, I will say, um... I'll say because the the shot was was definitely substantial. Um, I think that he would have dropped his gun at that point. Um, so yeah, you hit him. Um, the you catch him kind of right in the left shoulder, um, and the uh, the gun is, he has is like a uh, two handed um, weapon. So um, because of that, he kind of it jars his body enough um, that he he drops the gun. Um, and then additionally, let's see, I gotta, um, mark something else. Um, uh, let's see. Place goes. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So you hit him in the arm. He drops his weapon. Um, and, uh, you know, he kind of tries to duck a little bit further, but that would be, have to be into his, his next turn for him to do that. Um, all right. So next up we got patch. Yep. So I'm rushing, uh, Three, I'm slow. And that's it. Okay. Um, I'm kind of like staying as close to the wall as possible, but... Right, gotcha. Alright. Um, okay. Uh, so... Where are they going to go? Alright, so the purple 9th Division soldier is up next, who you can now see, Rauka. Um... They are going to move here, um, shoulder their way through this door, and uh, then try and get a more cover-based position on you. So they move into here. Uh, so that's them. Green is going to... As he was set to move on his turn, he is unfortunately not. He can, so he actually is going to do the same. But he's going to peel out of the building here. So he's going to actually go out into the street. And he is just going to try and back himself to the wall and get some distance on you. Next. We have hmm. all right uh, so the sergeant here um, he pops out and I'm gonna say he's gonna go there um, let's see I just gotta double check that nah, it's bad range um, let's see yeah, he's still gonna do it. Uh, but that's kind of in his way, so he's gonna move here. One, two, three. All right. Uh, so yeah, he uh, he rolls out from where he was. Uh, he aims. Uh, he holsters up a shotgun um, and levels it. Um, and for Shrek, he is gonna try and hit you. Uh, so he's gonna go ahead. with a shotty. Okay. I mean, you're twelve. So each of these squares is a meter. Um, the range of the shotgun he has is thirty meters. Um, so it's well within the range. It's not ideal situation, um, but he can still go ahead and take the shot. Uh, so he's gonna roll. I, I don't suppose I had time to take cover. I you you have you already have cover. Um, so you already okay. do, you do have. Um, I'll actually say you probably have heavy cover because he's firing upwards um, at you. Uh, so that's going to be a negative two to his roll. Um, so uh, he is actually going to miss. Uh, so he fires. Uh, the bullet kind of hits the brick um, next to you uh, in that. Um, and then he, you know, he stays out in front of that. Uh, but he missed you. And then finally, we have the red guy. Um, the red guy is going to hold and stay where he is. Um, so he'll, he did not know that there was going to be somebody to attack at this point. So he's going to hold his spot. Um, there was no one else other than Rauka who was 
in his range. So he's just preparing himself. Uh, and then next one. So then we go to the top of the round order. Nothing extremely significant has changed, so there's no need to reroll initiative. Um, Reggie, it is your turn. So you're in your second turn of uh, trying to bring another communications. Yeah, and or if I can hack into them in some way further. What what else would you be trying to do? Uh, if I can try to send a message or something, that seems. I mean, you still have communication. You still have a line of communications with them. Maybe and actually, you can I apologize. See so, you. Well, we'll go. You'll actually be declaring last. I still I have to write down the rest of these guys first. Um. So, all right. Hmm. Can she, like, have, like, hyper loud noise just overcome all their, uh, ear pieces and like blow out their eardrums um i think she could definitely try and um run feedback on them uh to the point where it might distract them a little bit probably take about the same amount of time um so if you want to go ahead and you know that'll be essentially the flavor of you disrupting their communications um which may additionally yeah. make it difficult to speak to each other so um, yeah, and yeah, if it's some kind of distraction in some way that helps, I think that's what I'm kind of looking for. Got it. Yeah. All right. Okay. And then... Wait. Yeah. All right. Okay, uh, so starting at the bottom and working our way up, uh, Patch, what are you going to do this round? Uh, I'm going to close to the door, and if there's, like, people inside, chuck a grenade, otherwise okay. uh, pull out my pistol. Okay. Fair Shrek, what are you going to do? Uh, drug action, aim, and fire on the guy with the shotgun. Okay. Um, for the drug, for the drug round, is it? When does that come? Is that? Is that? Do you get two back to back? I need to double check that quick. It, it just said one extra combat action. Gotcha. Let me just double check and see here. Um, so rush. After all other actions have been resolved, so your second round, so your second action um, is going to take place at the end of everybody else's. So your first one will come now. The second one will come... Actually, so I guess... Yeah, so we'll, we'll call your first one now, and then your second one will, t will go off after everybody else has gone. Okay. Um, actually, he's, like, out in the open. I'm just going to pop him twice. Okay, so you're going to try and shoot him twice. So both of your actions are going to be fire actions on the sergeant. Yellow. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Um, all right. Uh, yeah. Okay. And then, Reggie, you're going to continue to work. Or, Silver, what are you going to do? Silver, um, I'm going to move up to that opening there so I can see what's around. Okay, so you're going to... Uh, so you're gonna you're gonna open the door. Yeah, I guess so. Okay. So door. Okay. And Reggie hacking. Uh, let's see. Uh, Rauka, what are you doing? 
I missed uh, you. Okay, <clears throat> so I've seen my opportunity to get in the spotlight. Uh, I would like to charge through the door. Okay, through which door? Uh, follow green. Okay. Okay, so the door the doorway is open. Well, I mean, you could say like it's swinging open or whatever. We can yeah, you know, we yeah. can play it off for that. Okay, so you're gonna charge green. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. And... Okay. Rocket charge green. Uh, let's see. For Shrek. <laughs> And Pat, you were gonna throw a grenade in. Uh, yeah. Assuming there's people in there, or like I'm, I'm gonna look first, and if there's nobody in there, I'm not gonna chuck a grenade. But... Okay. Okay. Uh, so then, at order of execution, Reggie, you're hacking. Silver, you uh, you go to push open the door. Uh, you get it open. I mean, you fling it open. You're fucking crazy strong. So you easily yeah. get this door open um, to the point where you can see inside. Um, so you you um, you fling it open, um, and that will you know clear the way well enough for for Patch to throw uh, her grenade. Uh, so next up um, we have blue. Uh, so blue is gonna pick up his gun um, and he's gonna move um, he's gonna try and get out of the line of fire here um, yeah he'll move up to a higher ground uh, with his turn okay Rauka here you go so you're gonna charge this guy yes okay so you charge at him. Charge gives you a plus. Was a plus one success to da or plus one, minus one to success die and a plus one to your skill die success. Okay. So you're roll a minus one from what you regularly would. Um, no other bonuses or anything like that. Actually, um, yeah, no. Um, you would get a bonus if you're. Let's see. And uh, you attacking, um, we were attacking with a natural weapon because you do get an additional bonus for that. Uh, actually, I'm attacking with the mutilator. Okay, that's right. You have a powered fist. Okay, so that's your just your regular unarmed combat. Yeah. Okay. Begin the fisting. Uh oh. Oh, not so good. Fisting intensifies. All right. Uh, so <laughs> that, what, that's not intense fisting. <laughs> what was your, what was your bonus to that? Uh, that is um, plus eight. Okay. So you you um, because so and then you had a negative one from your charging. So you had uh, an eight total then to the roll. Yeah. All right. So that is a miss. It is not a you know terrible miss um, because you did not fail on all of them. Um, so yeah, you, you charge at this guy and you go to like swing at him. Um, he kind of like dodges out of the way and your fist like buries into the wall and knocks a chunk out of the masonry, um, behind him. Um, but he manages to dodge you. Yeah. Fair Shrek, uh, this is going to be your first action. All right. Plus seven to my rifle. Okay. All right, and you fire at uh, the sergeant. Yellow, yeah. Okay, uh, so plus seven. Um, mm -mm. Let me just check and see. So he does have light cover, so it's going to be a minus one to that, but I think you're still going to be okay. So you're like a plus six total now for that because um, those count to your... No, it's just to the success die. It doesn't count to the uh, skill dice. Um, so seven, twelve. Uh, not in heavy cover. Uh, you're not firing blinds. Uh, more than half the weapons. Your what's the range on your AR? Your AR range is was that 160 meters? Okay, you're plenty within that, so no problems there. Uh, so and just single single shot as well again, I assume. Um, is there a penalty for burst fire? Burst fire gets you additional damage, but then you expend more ammunition. But I'll fire a burst into him. Okay. Next time, um, you know, we'll go ahead and declare that before the roll. Um, you know, just so you get it. But you do get an additional 
plus one uh, or plus two damage for that. Um, so you're you know you're firing at him with a small burst. So you succeed uh, and you get um, on the skill dice. Uh, looks like two. You get plus seven to your shot. Yep. All right. So it's actually three skill dice success. So you can do. Um, I will say that his legs are probably obscured, so I'm just going to give you the extra damage on that. So it's going to be um, an additional plus four damage. So on top of your normal Fen AR um, damage, you are going to get an additional plus six damage to this. So go ahead and roll your damage. Sixteen. Okay, so twenty-two damage. Um, okay, uh, so you go ahead and you line up, and him rolling out and taking that aim was a big mistake. Um, because you nail him right through the chest, uh, and you kill him. Uh, he drops, uh, as you shoot him right through, he goes down, um, and he is out. Sergeant is dead. Um, um, no, uh, I, I want to be a good boy here. I already added him to plus nine, and I rolled a seven. I did 16 damage to him. 16 that is still enough to kill him <laughs> on the nose um okay, okay good plus well yeah no so it's six okay yeah 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 all right but still 16 total is yeah that's still enough to kill him so you're good um seven plus or wait no set you plus seven is 14 damage nine and seven that is what my two numbers were oh okay so the so the die roll was correct on the feed then Yes. Okay, yeah, then still. Still dead. Still good. He dead dead. Um, Yay! All right, sergeant's down. Uh, Patch. Okay, so I'm going to close so I can see. You climbing on Silver's shoulders there? No. Yeah, I can only close three. So actually, I guess here. Um, that was two. Real quick. Sure. Yeah, I'm not confident in my ability to check a grenade that far, so I'm just uh, not going to throw the grenade. I'm just going to close and pull out my pistol instead. Okay. Um, and that's that much. All right. Uh, so then the next soldier is going to go. So it's going to be purple. Uh, so purple. So he rolls, let's see, just check his closing distance. I think it's four. <laughs> closing is only two, actually. So he is going to, uh, he's going to move one, two. Uh, so he's going to be able to get a shot on Rauka, but I'm going to say that's, uh, eh, light cover because, eh, yeah, light cover for that. Um, because you're a little obscured. So he steps out. Uh, so he uh he holds at waist level, kind of a uh, it's a um, sh you know that shivers use uh, what's known as a Gauss rifle, which is kind of like a heavy, com like magnetized uh, weapon. Um. This one fires a um, volley of aluminum shards uh, out um, when it uh, unleashes. It's not terribly uh, damaging, but we'll see how it goes. Okay, uh, so he's got a hit. Okay, so he misses. Uh, so he fires, the shots go wide. Um, and... He actually, I mean, probably firing into combat, I think, is generally not considered the best uh, of ideas anyways. So, um, but he misses you, as it is. Um, all right, next guy. Uh, so the green soldier, uh, he does get his uh, fire on you. Um, uh, still, normally, if somebody was in close combat with you, you could not shoot at them. But the one caveat to that is that you get to fire at them the round they approach you. Um, so he yeah, is... What's that? That makes sense. Yeah. So uh, he is going to go ahead and fire as well. Uh, he is going to... Let's see. And he gets a... Let me see. Does he get a minus one for you? Let's see. Target on cover. 
target moved more than their closing speed this combat around. Um, what's your closing speed, uh, Perry? Four. Okay, so you did not move more than your closing speed. You moved exactly your closing speed, it looks like. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so he is going to... Oh, and also, if you're firing a three-round burst, you can re-roll your success die if you want. Um, but his hit. Uh, so he hit, and he actually uh, got one additional success. Uh, so, uh, Rauka, you are going to take uh, four damage, uh, or the amount, of, the amount of damage. You are going to take uh, six damage. Uh, so if you deduct that from your armor, which has a PV of four, you're going to take two damage. And then you're going to take four armor damage. And then for the tokens, if you notice, the red is your hit points, the green is your PV, the blue is your armor damage. Um, actually, um, you're going to take an additional one, or um, so you'll take seven damage total, so three hit points because um, it's because uh, the auto fire it has burst fire, so. Oh, I'm actually I'm sorry. Uh, plus two to that, so eight total. You take four. Four damage, four armor damage. Total. Next up, sergeant. Sergeant's dead. So we'll scrap him. Uh, and then the last soldier. Uh, he he has a shot on you. He is gonna fire on Rauka as well. Um, he does have the benefit of having higher ground, but it's still kind of a wonky angle, so I'm going to give you... Uh, I'm going to give you heavy cover for this. He could probably only see like a party, like your lower body, uh, so he's going to fire. Uh, that is going to miss. So he fires shots, uh, go into the ground. Uh, you don't take anything. And then, uh, top of the rounds. Let's go ahead and do declarations. So I got to get the soldiers out of the way. I had another action. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, y you do, but your second target is dead. Or your target for your second action is dead. Um, so what you can do is you can take an auxiliary action um, in lieu of that. Um, because, you know, you declared your shot on a guy who is no longer there. Um, let me look that up real quick. Okay, um, auxiliary. So, can I, like, move my position or something? Uh, I believe you can move. Let me just check. Because all you guys seem to keep the fighting away from the window. <laughs> How am I supposed to be supportive if I can't see you? I mean, just some words of encouragement. That's what you're talking about before with your support, right? That's I think that's what they assumed. Uh, all right, let me just double check here. So. Reach into their arsehole lots. <laughs> Come around, action. failed actions. Occasionally, Jacob Habaka, the throat. Occasionally, after declaring an action, but before a combatant gets to act, situations may arrive that prevent the chosen action from being performed. This is referred to as a failed action. Examples may include performing a charging... Okay, but we know the example. Uh, may perform an auxiliary action. Alternatively, the combatant may perform a hand-to-hand -hand attack, a ranged attack, but will, or a ranged attack or calculate the abbot, but will apply a minus two modifier to all dice during any skill rolls made in reaction to that action. Um, so you could potentially take a shot. I don't know if there's anybody in your view or not. Um... But if not, then you can do an auxiliary action, which let me just go ahead and just take a look at those quick. And in combat, defensive maneuvers, break off, natural weapons, range combat. I believe they're at the end here. Auxiliary actions. Uh, you can either reload a weapon, change to a different weapon, pick up a drop weapon or item, stand up a prone, uh, inject, use a med kit, use a flux gem, uh, dropping or getting out of armor, uh, deploying a bipod slash tripod on a weapon or any other activity that GM deems suitable. Uh, I will say that 
I mean, it, considering movement is not explicitly listed, I will say I can give you a one meter move, so you can move one space. Okay. So that's your second action. Uh, so, uh, top of the order, let me go ahead and just start doing declarations here um, for the soldiers. Dead. He gets no more actions. Uh, let's see. Green. Purple. Uh, Ralka, what are you going to do? I'm just going to smash him. Okay. Fair Shrek. What are you going to do with your two actions? First, I'm going to move and then uh, shoot the first hostile I see on my second one. Okay, so you're going to do like a full move for your first action. Um, and then you are going to fire on your second action. Yes. Generally, uh, so what's your... Generally, you need to designate a target. Um, so what is your rushing speed? Uh, my rush is five. Okay, so your rush is five. Um, so you can make a movement of five. So one, two, five, six, seven. So um, what I will say, um, because you're on the second floor, I didn't really, I haven't really mapped out the sentiment super closely, so it's tough to actually gauge. Um, but what I can do is, um, because you have two move actions, I would say if you spent both of them, then that would allow you to move 10. Um, unless, are you going to, so are you going to try and exit the building, or are you just, like, moving to a different area or something like that? Like, are you trying to hit out on ground floor level, or, like, just uh, go somewhere else? I'll get on ground floor. Okay, so what I will say is if you spend your whole, if you spend both of your actions, so that'll be a move 10... Um, I can put you out right around here. So put you out in this alleyway. So then the next time around, then you can be a little more, you know, you can be in the shit. Because then that'll take you, you have to move down a floor. You have to get around, navigate hallways, navigate stairwells. That's going to take you some time. But considering you're pretty heavily rushed up, you can do it all in a round. That sound fair? Okay, just put... Uh, just move me on my second action, I guess. So two uh, I didn't see the alleyway. Gotcha. All right. So move to X. X. Okay. Uh, patch. I'm going to... Uh, we can do our um, close distance after we uh, fire, right? So what you would do is you would declare your... If you were going to attack... You know, when you're doing yeah, my plan is to pop a shot at red and then just close to move one square up so that I'm out of, like, firing range for return fire. Okay. Um, so you're going... So, um, let me see. I think you do your... I think you ha you normally do movement beforehand. Let me see here. Let's double check. Range text. of fire, rate of fire, cover, let's see, range combat, suppress a fire, so, uh, movement, let's see, outside of combat, let's see, combat rounds to action. Ranged attack modifier. Sorry, I'm just looking this up here. Yeah, no. I think that there is yeah. like, uh, I know you can move your closing speed and fire, but I don't know if you can do it. 
in the opposite direction. So I'm just trying to look that up quick. When performing a range attack, the combatant may move up to their closing speed before performing the attack, providing okay. they are not engaged in hand-to-hand -hand combat. This allows them to close a small distance before firing. So you can okay. move beforehand. In that case, yeah, I'm just going to pop a shot at red. I would say where you're at as well um, is light cover um, because you're ducking behind a loading dock entrance. You yeah. Know, you're... Um, so, you know, you can keep that in mind. So, you're going to fire at red? Yeah. Okay. 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 And silver. Uh, I'm going to move up to... Can I toggle this? Um, Up to the top of that stairway there? Uh, or, yeah, or no, you'll be, you, um, be in her line, line of fire. Yeah. I'll move like two squares in front of me. Okay. And, and what's your she, your closing speed is what? Three. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I'll consider like the first one because you're kind of climbing up onto the platform. Um, additionally, um, you know, I am, since you pretty much have the line of sight on everybody, I should be announcing what these guys are doing. So. Um, okay. I'll just go ahead and, you know, mention them out and I'll do that more in the next round. So red is going to be firing at silver at you. Green is going to melee attack Rauka. Um, purple is going to move, uh, Rauka, you know, you're Rauka's Rauka. Uh, and then, uh, the blue one is going to be firing at patch. Uh, so blue was before you, uh, silver. So you are going to move, um, are you gonna move and fire, or are you gonna? Yeah. Or, okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna move in, um, kind of kneel. Is there like bars on on these, or is it like a? Yeah. So the the edges of them have do have like hand railings. I would say that they're probably not enough to provide cover for you. Where you are provides cover, um, but getting okay. up on there is not gonna provide cover for you. You'll oh, be out then there. I'll I'll just fire from there then. That's better. Okay. All I'll right. Shoot at at red. All right, you're gonna fire red. Okay. Yeah. I got the 603 out. Okay. And then, Reggie, this is going to be a third round of um, trying to disrupt our communications, correct? Can, can I add to what he's doing as what he's you, doing that? What are you can looking he, to do? Uh, so, Reggie has recently gotten into a new type of music, uh, mash head music. Okay. And uh, as he's, you know, doing this hacking thing, he's like, oh, wait, they can still hear me. And so he thinks, what is a better way to distract them than to start singing the popular song Aim for the Head by uh, the band Heads Will Roll? And he just starts squawking that music into... <laughs> okay. Um, singing, um, I I just shoot from the hip and I aim for the head. And he goes, Aah! like he's trying to do like the yell thing. But it's like, <laughs> Perfect. Like, squawky, All it's right. like ridiculous. All right. <laughs> Uh, all right that's that's great um okay i'm gonna actually give you a whatever is making that noise i'm putting it out of its misery <laughs> 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 uh, let me see i oh man uh i gotta give you some sort of roll on that because that is super fun uh i am oh god oh let's see here uh let's see what do you have i will say um give me an intimidation check so you can make unskilled rolls um so intimidation is based uh, off of your was, gonna, was that i was gonna argue i was gonna argue it's an oratory thing but yeah no all right fine no okay that's that's fine yeah oratory sure we'll do it go ahead and give me an oratory roll uh you're the first one to act so you get it, you get it first So if I just have a one, is it a two d ten roll, or is it? Yeah. So you'd be rolling your success die and then two skill die. So you'd be rolling three d ten total. And it's plus six. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, so you succeed, and then you get one skill success. Okay. Um, uh, so. As you're doing that, um, you hear someone come through on the comms. Because at this point, having gone three in, you've gotten to the point where you've um, managed to access all of their communications, not just the dead sergeant. 
Um, and you hear one of them say, like, find wherever that's coming from and fucking kill it! Um, so that's, uh, you, you know, you've definitely gotten their attention. Okay, Silver, your go. Uh, you are firing at Red. Anticipation. 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 I'm not doing the sniper nest gimmick until I have a weapon that could shoot through walls. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this one get, can get through walls. It's just uh, at a you know at a penalty. No, I want like an I want like a Barrett fifty cow. <laughs> That's that'd probably be the uh, snipe. Well, that would be like the sniper cannon. We'll talk about that later on. Bill, you having oh, trouble with the roll? Walls. Hey, oh, silver. Yeah. You having trouble with the roll? It's your go. No, I. Uh, oh, I got two ranks and pistol, so two skill, right? So you're firing with a yep. 603. Yeah. So yes, yeah, so that's gonna be two skills. So you're rolling 40 10 total, and your what's your bonus? It is... That's on here. Uh, seven altogether. Plus okay. Seven. So I'm going to give him one for light cover because uh, you know he's got elevation, but you still hit him pretty comfortably. So we got a okay. 13, uh, and then two more successes on top of that. Um, are you firing the single shot pistol, or are you firing the burst fire off the 603? Single shot. All right. I really should make you specify that beforehand. Um, so you did get. Yeah, close. I planned on single. Okay. That's it? I said I. Uh, I. I should. You know. I should specify that. And make people specify that beforehand. Um, okay. okay. So you succeed. Uh, you hit him. Uh, you succeeded yeah. with plus two skill dice. So you can either do an extra two damage or you can hit him in the arm. I'll do two damage. Okay. Uh, so go ahead and roll damage for me and add two on top of that. Okay. Um. We gotta figure that out. What's the... Uh, Fen 603? Yeah. So Fen 603 is going to be 1d10 minus 2 damage with a minimum damage of 3. So 1d10 flat is what you're gonna be rolling. Okay. That's easy enough. Yep. Nice. Alright, so 7 damage, Bing. and let's see the armor damage, one, one armor damage off of that. So... Uh, so... Okay. Uh, yep. So you fire the sh you fire the shot. Um, you land a hit. It digs into his armor. Um, but I mean, it's a solid hit. You know, you and knowing um knowing body blocker, you you probably got through. But he's still up and fighting. Okay. Okay. Next guy. Uh, so that's blue. Uh, blue declared that he was going to fire at Patch. So he is going to go ahead and take his shot. Patch is in light cover. So this is going to be. Uh, minus one to that. Um, even though he's hiring, firing from higher up, it's still a tough shot. So, um, but he gets the uh, he gets rate of fire of three, so he's gonna fire. Uh, minus one, uh, so he is gonna miss because of the cover. Uh, so he fires. Uh, it rattles off. Uh, you just like uh, a bunch of like metal flechettes, um, just like rip off the um, grating that's by you and kind of. Um, that kind of takes all the momentum out of them and they kind of like ping into your armor a little bit, but they don't even, you know, like it just falls off of it basically. Uh, so yeah, you... Patch, yeah, Patch tries to look cool, but you can see there's a visible flinching at the first time getting actually fired at. <laughs> that a thing? Yeah, fair enough. All right, Rauka. You're going to be punchy green man? Oh, yeah. Punchy green man. Let's punch him. Oh, he's punching. Oh, God. Uh oh. Uh, so what is your, uh, bonus? Eight. Eight? All right. You miss. Um, yeah, you square up with this guy. You're like, fuck! And, like, he ducks again. Uh, and you, uh, you pop the wall. Uh, the wall, you know, crumbles away some more. You're, you're doing some pretty good damage to that wall. Um, but next, Fair Shrek. What so about my fair wall? Shrek, so Fair Shrek, oh, Jesus Christ. So Fair Shrek, you start moving. Um, you're running along the, uh, you're running along the building. You're starting to make your way out. Patch. 
Yep. Yep. I, uh, Pop, uh, I read it's a two skill. Oh, and I got a plus five, so that's uh, three successes. Or a success on the red one and then two other successes. Okay, so he... Um... So he gets light cover, so that's going to be a minus okay, one, so one for that. Him, so. But you still, uh, you still hit him. So what was the plus? Uh, let's see. I got uh, success on my success, and then uh, two other ones. Assuming it's the base ten, right? Yes. The target number, yeah. So two other ones. Okay. Uh, uh, so. So you're. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to do bonus damage. Okay. What was the second set of dice that you were rolling there? What? Oh, that was me trying to uh, roll damage and hitting the skill button on accident. Mate, romp. Okay. Um, yeah. So you're gonna get plus two to your um, damage because um, I assume, or you can hit an arm if you want. I uh, know. I'm just gonna do get, get the plus two to roll the flat one d10. Okay. And you were firing at blue. You're firing at red, right? Red. Yep. yep. Okay. Not bad. <laughs> All right. One d10 on the even. So. That's eight damage. Yep. That's pretty good. All right. Yeah, you and Silver both uh, fire a couple of exchanges, and you uh, hit uh, you hit red for a pretty solid amount. Uh, and then and again, still trying to look cool, but visibly excited, uh, and my hair kind of goes a little bit brighter as I actually hit my first person mm -hmm. outside of a training combat. So. Oh, I got him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cool. Um, all right, so next up we have Purple. Uh, so Purple is going to move. Uh, he's going to take a rush and move his full distance, which I believe is five. Yeah, rushing is five. So uh, he is going to move one, two, three, four, five. Boom. He's going to move there. Next up we have Green. Uh, green is going to melee Rauka. Okay, so he, uh, you know, you swing at him, Rauka. Uh, he lets go of his uh, his flesh hat, just kind of lets it hang by his side off of the uh, um, off of his strap. Uh, he grabs a blade um, and then he tries to uh, slash at you. Uh, so he is going to uh, let's see. He didn't try and hit you with melee last turn. Change your target. Just double check something real quick here on my screen. My screen. Um, melee results. Hand-to-hand -hand modifiers. Uh, just so you know, Rauka, uh, you do get a plus one to your success die if you successfully hit the same target during the last round, which you haven't hit this guy yet, but. Yeah. Um, I got the wall twice though. You did. You fucked up that wall. Um, all right, but he's gonna he's gonna miss you as well. More more um, accurately, uh, you know, the uh, shot um, deflects off of your armor um, yeah. as he still tries to maintain like it just uh, is off balance from having to dodge your shots um, so regularly. Uh, so moving on to the next soldier who is red, uh, he is going to be. Uh, firing at silver, so he's going to go ahead and take his shot. Uh, it's going to be a minus one because of the uh, cover for the bay doors, uh, so he's going to take his shot. Uh, he is going to hit, uh, and he is going to hit on three skill die, uh, so he is going to do some extra damage for that. Uh, so he's going to do plus four damage to you. I won't say he gets to hit a leg. Um, I could have him hit an arm, but nah. um, I'm just going to have him do extra damage. Uh, so he is going to hit you for nine damage total. Um, so with your PV, that's going to be five damage. Uh, and then four armor damage. Okay. Uh, actually, no, wait, sorry. Uh, add another so uh, add another two on top of that because of his rate of fire. Um, actually, no, I think I figured that into that already. No, scratch that. Um, just the, so nine damage, so minus your PV is going to be five total to you. Okay. Yeah, because I considered his uh, rate of fire in the macro that I made already. 
All right. Uh, next round. Uh, so order. Uh, so let me go ahead and just fill in declarations here. Um, I. Oh, sorry. Just move my, you're myself. out. Yep, you're out. So I'll put you out. You're out on the street right here. Yeah, go ahead. No problem. I gotta see if I can. Can I put you in as like another guy down here? Yes, I can. Perfect. Um, so yeah, we'll just put you at a zero for that. That's perfect, actually. Okay. That way I won't forget. Okay, uh, um, so starting at the bottom, uh, so Fair Shrek, um, since you're, this is, you know, you go last in the order, what is your first uh, action going to be? This will actually go off as your second action. Eh, I'll just fuck it. I'll just have you do them both at the same time. Um, so we'll start off with Red. So Red is going to, um, ba -ba -ba, Red is gonna fucking... I mean, he hit Silver already. He's going to fire at Silver again. Green is going to melee Rauka, but he is going to... Uh, he's going to put a little into defense here. Uh, so he is only going to go at you with a skill of... Let's see. He has how much in melee? He's going to... Um, he's going to act defensively. So melee, Rauka... For, uh, so, Rauka, you're going to get a minus two to your next roll because he's acting defensively. So, in Slay Industries, um, if you're in melee combat, you can choose to uh, sacrifice any of your skill dice to give your opponents a negative one to hit you. Um, so, he has a melee skill of two, so he is going to give himself a minus two to, or, you know, to forego those two skill die to give you a minus two to your hit. So when he rolls to attack you, he's going to be attacking with a skill of zero, essentially. Okay. Um, purple is going to continue to rush. Uh, Rauka, here you go. All right, let's punch this guy. Got to hit him eventually, right? Attack green. Uh, Fair Shrek, what are your two actions going to be? My first action is going to shoot green, and how does luck work again? Uh, luck is, uh, you can spend a point of luck to, um, either, uh, re-roll, I think, uh, any or all of your dice for a roll, or you can spend it at a one-for-one -one rate to increase your success die. Uh, you can do either of these things after you have rolled. Um, so you do not have to decide now. So if you don't need it, then you didn't use it. Um, I okay. just, do just want to check up firing into combat quick, because I do believe that there is some sort of, because you do, I believe, run a risk of hitting... Um, Rauka, were you to uh, fire into combat? So let me just look that up really quick. Um, Hence the luck. Sure. Fair enough. Good point. Um, come around actions. Uh, so melee. Solving in ranged combat. So line of sight and firing blind. Range attack modifiers. Cover. Uh, aim. Suppress fire. Grenades. Long dual wheeling. Solving ranged attacks. Firing at engaged targets. Firing into an existing hand-to-hand -hand combat situation is a dangerous prospect. With constant unpredictable moves, blah, blah, blah. Combatants may fire at targets who are engaged in hand-to-hand -hand combat. However, at least one skill die success is also required to hit the intended target. If the skill die results with no in a success if the success die results in a success with no additional skill die successes, then the actual target must be randomized to all between all those involved. So you'll you can do it, but if you do not hit with any skill dice, then it's randomized as to who you actually hit. So, um, with that in mind, do you want to shoot at green? Yes, I do, and I'll use luck if I fuck up. Okay, and what's your second action going to be? Um, move closer towards Ralka. So you do get to move your closing distance on both on an attack action. So if you you know like wanted to shoot twice, you could just close twice. Boom, close fire, close fire, if you want. Or if you want, you can dedicate your whole second action to move your rushing speed, which is five. Um, well, I'm already in short range of my weapon, but I will close and shoot if I can do that for free. Okay, so you're going to attack him twice, because you get to move your closing distance both times, if you want. So you can move two, shoot, two, shoot. So you'll move like a total of four and get to attack twice if that's what you want to do. I'll, I'm gonna I'm gonna close and shoot and then run into me and run into the engagement. Okay, so you're gonna shoot and then you're gonna rush. Okay, uh, or yeah, rushing speed. 
Uh, okay, gotcha. Uh, Patch. Uh, I'm going to pop red again. Single shot. Fire it red again? Yeah. Okay. Um, blue is going to return fire at you. Uh, silver. Uh, I'm going to hope that patch is uh, accurate and try to hit blue. So you're going to fire at blue? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and Reggie, you're going to go ahead. Oh. Actually, you know what? I'm going to, um, let me see here. Oh, fuck. Um, all right. Uh, and Reggie, you're going to end in your final one to um, blow out their communications, correct? Yeah, yeah, and, and he's trying to also distract if yep. that in any way helps with the combat. So, like, yep, so... Like Yep, so yours is going to go off first. So what I'm going to say um, is going to happen here is that um, because everybody's actively, you know, um, fighting somebody, nobody can go to look for you, but the combination of your screeching combined with the screeching that you're causing uh, with your communications hacking is going to give everybody a negative one to their success die um, for all of their rolls. Um, and I will say as long as you sustain this action, um, then it will continue to persist. So... Which is pretty big. Um, so that is, you know, your um, one all success. So that is what you're doing. And, and I did. Be... Yes. I do have an extra plus one. I forgot about my plus one bonus. I don't know if that makes any difference. Plus one bonus uh, for two, what? For a turn. Um, uh, no, I mean, you, succeed, you succeeded on that roll already. Um, so, so fine. yeah, you're good. Um, how many successes did you have on that? Oh. Um, just go back and check. So you had a 62, you had, you had, uh, you succeeded on the skill die and you had uh, one success. Okay. Okay, yeah. So like I said, you are currently, I'm disrupting yeah, your so communications. Right. Okay. Um, I will say that they can take a full round to pull off their communicator, so... Or an auxiliary action, um, aux action to remove. Okay. Um, so, he so Reggie, that was your go. Your com your commun your comms hacking fires off. Silver, your turn. Uh, I'm gonna shoot. Okay. At blue. All right. That's bad, right? Looks like you're gonna miss. Yeah. What you, what's your bonus? Plus seven. Okay. Um, let me just double check. Uh, I don't know if you get that bonus if you hit him already before. I don't believe so. Uh, yeah. So. Okay. So seven. Yep. So you're going to miss him. Okay. And, and also everybody who's firing, be sure to keep track of their ammo. Um, because we'll go ahead and, you know, make sure that's updated at the end. So. So he goes, uh. And now blue goes. So blue is going to take his action of firing at patch. So blue fires a patch. Uh, blue is going to miss. Next up, Rauka. All right. It's a little better. Uh, yeah. Yes. Sure. All right. So even with your um, negative two, uh, you're going to definitely hit him. Um, so how many successes do you get? You get plus seven, right? Uh, for my... For your combat. bonus. Yeah. It's plus eight. Plus eight. Okay. So that's three, four successes. Um, okay. Uh, so margin success, damage modifier... Uh, and let's see. So your strength. Um, so you can either do plus six damage. Uh, you get plus six, and you can hit him in the head. Uh, so that is actually not an or, but an and. Um, so I don't even think it's going to matter, though. Um, go ahead and roll your damage um, with your strength modifier and the extra six damage, and then whatever it is off the mutilator. Uh. So the mutilator fist. The mutilator is is one d ten. Uh, minimum four, so plus six plus my strength. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, 
Oh, no, not plus your strength. Um, oh. If you have a five strength, it's plus one damage. So oh, okay. that is, so it's plus seven then total, in addition to the, uh, to the D10 roll. So D10 seven. plus seven, so 17 damage. Yep. Uh, you kill him. Um, yeah, so you, uh, you swing, uh, he ducks, you swing again, he ducks. Um, this time you actually kind of managed to time him, um, and you, you gauge that he weaves a certain way. Um, you know, he kind of swayed back and forth and you, um, just went with the left instead of the right that he was expecting. And he leans right into your punch, uh, and you punch, um, you punch his hat off. Um, you punch his head clean off his shoulders, um, uh, and, uh, D, you kind of see out of the corner of your eye that the little, um, third eye drone is, like, right, like, here, uh, and gets a very good view of it. I flex. <laughs> All right. Um, so, mirror. Uh, so, Fair Shrek, uh, your go. Uh, your target is dead again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to, can I, can I rush and put my gun away at the same time? Um, so your auxiliary action, you can, you can, um, shoulder and switch your weapons. Um, so again, you know, like I said, your aux is re reloading, switching weapons, something like that. Um, you can't move on it. Um, you can move your closing distance though. I mean, yeah, that's fine. Um, so you can move your two, uh, and then uh, do you want to like pull out your claymore instead? Yes. Okay. So yeah, you, you move and then you holster and pull your claymore you're good oh so that's your first action patch uh yep uh kill fuck nope that's a miss okay uh you miss uh <laughs> so I'm, i i lose a little bit of confidence my hair gets a shade darker <laughs> okay um mm -mm. All right, uh, purple's going to go. So purple moves his rush. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, opens the door over here. So we'll go ahead and clear that out. Not that that matters to anybody else. Um, that's his go. Uh, that guy's dead. And now red's going to go. So red's action was to fire at silver. So red's going to fire at silver. Fires off the flechette rounds. Uh, and he is going to miss. So yeah, you're in pretty good cover at this point. Um, he's trying to return fire, um, but he does not succeed. And then Fair Shrek, uh, this is your second action. Um, so you're going to go ahead and rush. So go ahead and move your five spaces. Was that five? I thought that was only four. Everyone's avatars in my way. I need to move one more space. There you go. I could have moved you far if you needed to. Ah, yes. We're good. Okay. I can see, I can see clearly now. The rain is gone. Okay. Uh, so top of the order. Um, top of the order. Uh, declarations go in reverse. So starting at the bottom, um, red is gonna keep returning fire on silver. On silver. Green is dead. Uh, purple is going to fire on the reporter. Um, Rauka. Uh, I am running back into the building. Okay. So you're going to rush? Uh, yeah. Okay. First Shrek, your two actions. I'm going to run in and attack Red. Okay, so first that so you're going to rush in, or you're um you're in melee, or you have your melee now, so you're gonna presumably gonna try and attack him in melee range. Um, keep in mind, Red is yes. on Red is on a, an elevated platform. Um, he is above these distillery tanks, so you'd actually need to go up the. Um, he has a high ground. He does have the high ground. Wait, it's right. Is there anything he's standing on that I can cut that I can cut out and destabilize the platform? Um, unfortunately, you probably have like you're looking at probably three to four struts to cut out. Um, on you probably wouldn't be able to do that. It would probably be more prudent to just 
to just run up there to him. Or blue is at the top of the stairs as well. So blue is at the top of the stairs, and then red is um, at the at the edge on elevator. So, uh... okay. So can I run and then do kind of like a bonsai rush at blue? Just charge at him with my sword out. Uh, so do 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 do. Let's see, is charging allow you to move your rush distance? I think it might. If that's the case, then you can rush on your first one and then charge on your second. Um, let me just double check. I think you can um, do your... Uh, let me see. Is there anything on here that says it? Charging. Okay. Uh, previous, previous, previous. Hand-to-hand -hand combat. Charging a target. Let me see here. Charge. Moves up to their rushing speed. So your rushing speed is 5. So in your first one, you get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 here. And then your second one. So yes, you could. Um, your first action can rush. Your second action can charge blue. So. Excellent. Yep. You're good. Assuming he doesn't die before you get there. You know, <laughs> patch. Uh, so I yeah I don't know what purple's going after, but I know he's going after something. So I think I'm going to step in, uh, to and try to take a shot at him. Okay. Just so you know, um, to move from where you are into this platform up here is going to be two movement because okay. you're climbing. Um, so okay. just be aware of that. Yeah, I got three uh, as a closing. Yep. So you should be able to do that. Um, okay, so that's patch. Uh, blue um, is gonna. Uh, uh, yeah, blue is gonna continue to fire a patch. He doesn't even know Fair Shrek's fucking there yet, pretty much. Uh, silver. I am gonna do the same as patch and try to take out the purple guy. Okay. Fire try to save you here. Okay. He's cracking wide, so I gotta put him away. Gotcha. Uh, and then, uh, let's see, and Reggie, um, you're going to maintain your, um, auditory assault on these guys? Um, I think he's, he's going to try uh, some kind of a, a persuasion yell through the thing to say, stand down and we won't kill the rest of you. Their teammates have fallen. Okay. Um, hmm. Yeah. Um, so you're going to go first. Uh, go ahead and give me a persuasion check. <laughs> Lol. <laughs> that was a lie. <laughs> don't tell them that. They don't have to know that. I mean, you could tell us to stand down. We might would think uh wait my persuasion was you're over two in persuasion two so that's uh that's four yep yes and then my bonus as long as none of them are neophrons my bonus is eight no neophrons in this group <laughs> Ooh. Wait, that's kind of bad. Maybe. I don't know. All right, so eight. So, um, so 12 is the, uh, um, so you call through, um, <laughs> you, you call through, um, but the feedback that you created earlier, um, you get no response from them. So you can't tell if they didn't hear you or you can't hear them or anything along those lines, but you do communicate the message, um, and you'll have to you, again. You don't even know at this point. You can't see into here anyway, so you don't know how they're going to react to it. Yeah. Okay. Um, but you do. You do try that. Uh, so next up, silver. You go ahead and uh, you. So again, you can move your closing distance, which is yeah, so two. Three. I got three. Three. Okay. So yeah. You, so there you go. Move to that, and you have sight on purple. So. You I'm going to try to 
do the do the shooters. Yeah, I say um, no cover for him um, because it's you have high and you're through an open window that's already been broken. Yeah. I might actually hit him. Uh, yeah. So what do you get you, as your bonus? A seven. So seven. Uh, yep, yeah, that is gonna hit him. Uh, so that's gonna hit seven, fifteen, ten. 10 yep so you hit with three successes um so you so I, can, so I can call shot to the arm uh you can hit the leg or the arm um now if you hit the arm the arm is going to be uh, random but it is a two-handed weapon so um you can um, try to take out his, his weapon yeah okay um so i'm gonna say uh let's see so i'm gonna roll one d2 um a one's going to be his left arm, a two's going to be his right arm, just for um, the purposes. So that's his right arm, so that was his gun holding arm, too, especially. So he definitely drops it. Um, okay. So go ahead and roll your damage as normal, and he is going to... You have successfully disarmed him. So it's minus two, right? Uh, for offense 603, I believe it's 1d10 minus two, yeah. Yep. Okay. Okay. So seven, again. Okay. So seven, so you hit him in the arm. Okay, so... Try to... I think I have his lethality, if I can. Yeah, I mean, you succeeded in disarming him. So, I mean, that well, definitely well, works. Well, he's got to stay alive, or else we don't get paid. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, and... <laughs> so, next up is... Blue. So, Blue is gonna fire a patch again. Blue is going to hit. Uh, and... <laughs> get two extra successes on top of that uh so that is gonna be seven damage and four armor damage patch okay um so the it's reduced by the um, yep so it does not do any damage to your hit points um it does one damage to my armor uh no no so the pv only reduces the damage to your hit points you take the armor damage in full okay yeah that's what i'm saying it does one damage to my armor Right. No, he does four damage to your armor. Oh, four damage to my armor. Okay. Yeah. So he did. Yeah, he did seven damage to you, and then four armor damage. So. Okay. Got that good armor. He's got that good, good. Put them points in protect. That's good, Joe. Um. <laughs> so if you can adjust that on your character, um, that's the blue circle there. Okay. Uh. All right, and then next up. Uh, so that was blue. Rauka. Uh, make a uh, charge into the building. All right. Um, so go ahead and make um, your move. I'm gonna go. Can you move? Can I move uh, diagonal? Yeah, I'm. Yeah, I, I. I'm. I'm not fucking around with that. So yeah, diagonal is just one too. All right. I'm just gonna go here. Okay. I'm looking for the hostage. Gotcha. <clears throat> Okay, uh, Rauka, uh, Fair Shrek is next. So you get your rush action. Somebody wants oh. told me the world is gonna roll me. <laughs> All right, so your first, so in your that. second one, you'll get up. So your first one is five, so you're gonna go there, and then your second action at the end of the round will be to there, and then you can whack the shit out of Oh, I. I thought we were doing both at once. So we're, I'm declaring I'm both at once, but it says in the book that you actually have to do your second one after everybody else is gone. So Fine. But you're still going to get there. You're still going to get to do it. Nobody else has shot at him, so he'll be alive when you get there. Um, p patch. Yeah. So Go move ahead and make in. Your that's two. That's one. Make my shot. Oh, yeah. That's um, two success. Or yeah, success on the scale, and then one extra success. Okay. Um, so one plus one skill, or so plus one. So with one skill die success, you get plus one damage. Okay. Um, so then go ahead and make the roll. Uh, four damage. So four damage total. Okay. Um, you um, fire at him, and the bullet buries into his armor. Next up. Um, we have Purple, uh, who was going to take his action um, to fire at the reporter, but he is disarmed, so his action is blown. It has failed. Uh, now we have uh, number f or, uh, Red, 
who is going to fire at Silver. He still does have a shot on Silver, so he is going to take a shot. Um, and he Get is going to miss. Shot. Yeah, he misses. And now, Fair Shrek, your final action. All right, so you go ahead, you move up. Cutting him in half. Go ahead and make your attack roll. I. Um. I'm going to use luck to re-roll that four. Okay, hang on a second. So why are you rolling sixty ten? You have a five in um melee, oh. or a four in melee. Oh. Sorry, I was rolling with my bonus. Hold on. No worries. So for your melee weapons, you're going to roll 4 d10. <clears throat> Scared the hell out of me. <laughs> I'm like, holy shit, he has a 4 in melee. He's going to fucking kill this guy super bad. <laughs> I'm rolling a 3, not a 4. Uh, no, you have a skill, you have a melee of two, but you are, oh. at, you are at a minus one to, for the success die though. All right. Okay. So, um, that's, uh, 12. Okay. So a 12, uh, a 10, a nine is your bonus a plus five. Oh, wait, it's a plus six, so that's plus a 13. Uh, minus the one is 12, but it's still successful. Yeah. And then, uh, so, plus six, so 11, 10, and 13. So, you are going to hit for either four extra damage or hitting his leg. <laughs> I'll take the extra damage. All right, so go ahead and roll your damage. So for a power reaper, or I'm sorry, for a um, power claymore, that is power be... reaper. No, not yet. Uh, oh so power God. claymore is two d10 minus three. Oh. So with the four extra damage, you're going to be two d10 plus one. Nineteen. Okay, and then two armor damage, but uh, I don't believe it's going to matter. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you you just barrel your way in, um, run up the stairs. And then just kind of I, at, at the end of your momentum. Go ahead and describe it. Go ahead. I, I'm i running up, uh, holding my, my sword out straight. And as I'm like a step or two, as I get to the point where I'm like low enough, I just raise the sword up from his crotch to his helmet. And he falls in half. All right. Yeah. You, uh, you run up and you successfully, uh, you successfully cut him right in half. Um, let's see how those three successes. Okay, cool. And then, and then He's I yell out, then I yell Gungala. All right. Um, oh, also, um, I did, I neglected to mention this, but Rauka, um, when you got the, um, kill on green, take a rating point for that. Okay. Because four successes, camera watching, like, that's, yeah. An yeah, he can take it. Extraordinary circumstances. You get a rating point for that for sure. All right. Uh, so for rating points for anybody who doesn't know is just a points that we spent on feats that will let you do extraordinary things. Um, when Rauka did the start of the combat where he uh, rushed in and was able to attack before other people were um, to you know be able to see him or whatever, that was a feat. So there's a variety of different ones that you can do that can either be brains, body, or bravado, I think are the three different categories. Um, so you get a, a rating point um, to use cool. for that. Uh, okay, so Fair Shrek go, went, uh, so top of the go, um, let me go ahead and declare action, so blue is dead now, blue down, mark him, so zero, he's at zero, and he's dead, so now... Let's see, uh, Red is still alive. Uh, he is going to fire at for Shrek. Purple is going to pick up his weapon. Uh, Rauka. Uh, I 
think. Um, I want to charge into this back room here. Uh, Which one? The, the one the purple one. went into? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so, so you're going to rush? Charge, or are you going to charge? Yeah, I want to charge purple, um, but I also... Do you have a line of sight? Can you see purple? Oh, wait. No, no, I can't. Never so mind. you can't charge him. Okay, uh, then I'm... I guess I'm just going to run to the doorway. Okay. Are you going to run inside or just to the doorway? Yeah, inside. Oh, well, I mean, you. so your action is going to be to rush. So right, right, uh, right. that is a window. The doorway, there is a doorway uh, oh, over okay. here. Right here, okay. Yeah. So yeah, I'll rush through the doorway. All right, so you're going to rush. Don't move there yet. Uh, for Shrek, your two actions. I'm going to charge red, and then I'm going to throw red off the balcony. Okay. okay. Uh, yeah, let's see. I don't, yeah, there's no reason you can't charge twice in a row, I don't think. Um, let me just double check charging real quick. Potential hand can, risky potential... To inflict additional damage too, so you get additional damage off of a charge as well. I think you get plus one damage. I want to say. Let me see. Much Sweet. Yeah, I think you get. So, just double check that quick charging targets. Draw weapons. Why can I not find charging for that? We're going to say it's plus one. I'm pretty sure it's plus one. So, um, okay. So you are going to charge red. And then throw him off the balcony. Yep. Okay. So that is going to be... So are you charging him on your first action and then attacking him again on your second one by trying to throw him off? Yeah, I'm going to charge Claymore him once and then unarmed throw him off next. Okay. Gotcha. All right. Um, patch. Um, yeah, I'm gonna move to the top of the stairs and shoot uh, purple. Okay. Shoot a purple. Um, blue is dead. Silver. Can I jump off of there? Oh, how far down is that? Um, it's only a few foot drop. Um, I'll say it's gonna be a similar thing. Of it'll be two movement to move down to that. Okay. I'm just gonna. Drop the end, mm -hmm. you know, over the railing, and then draw the chain axe and try to charge the purple guy. Okay, so move and switch weapon. Yeah. Okay. And Reggie, your last actor, your action, and your first to go. Um. Would you accept a, a leadership role that I would be trying to boost the morale of my team and be like, we almost got this, uh, secure the hostage, you guys are doing great, something like that, to uh, yeah, a leadership role? Yeah, give me a second here. Let's see what... Barge it. Let's see what leadership can do. It is the recognized art of leading others both in combat situations and through arduous tasks. Yeah, I'm just gonna see if there's anything written down. I mean, I'll I'll give you something to do with it for sure. Um, I'm just looking to say. Uh, let me see. Roll. Come on. There we go. Charisma, leadership, recognize art and leader. Good leader can strive. See. I just want Perry to get to that purple guy and ham it up. It'd be awesome. Go ahead and give me the leadership role, Sabrina. We'll see. We'll see how good it is, and that'll determine what happens. 
So this is four D10s. Uh, is your leadership a two? two? Yep. And it's plus... Plus what? Seven. Plus seven. Okay. Um, so... Uh, yeah, so I'm going to say that... Um, with your um with your leadership call um i'm gonna give everyone else a plus one to hit um which is again a pretty significant bonus so you're gonna bump you're gonna buff everybody yeah. Plus one. yeah 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 team that is oh, just yeah. a success that is not to your you know skill dies for damage or whatever but still significant um silver yeah so jumping off okay so you jump off. Get that. Yeah. Okay. Get that, get that chain axe out and come after him. Okay. Right. Uh, I'll go here. Yeah, and I'll say so. This um, well, so you get what? Uh, so for the auxiliary action of switching weapons, you'll move your closing distance, um, which is going to be just one short of that. But I mean, you wouldn't have gotten to attack him this turn anyways, so. Okay. So you'll uh, be here, and then this would be like difficult terrain, so it would cost you like two move next turn to get through to him. So I got three, right? So it's like one, two, three. Well, so you uh, moved here. This cost you two because you had to hop the railing. So one, two, three. Can't jump diagonal. Uh, yeah. But then this it costs two to get through this window still. So then two. you'd be one, mm -hmm. two, and then you'd you'd hit the hit the wall. Oh, there's a... I gotta go through here? There's a window here. Okay. So, you can climb through it, but it'll just cost you two movement to get through it. Okay. Okay. Alright, uh, that guy's dead. Rauka, here you go. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going... I'm moving over to the... to the door. And, uh... Does it cost, a, a, like, a movement to open it, or... Can I just... Uh, it's already open. Oh, it is? Yeah. Uh, I'm in there, then. <clears throat> um, that was my, well, that was more than my closing speed, so I probably don't have, uh, time to attack yet, do I? No, because it was a rush, uh, and because you didn't have line of sight to him, you couldn't charge him. Yeah. Okay. No. Okay. Right. Yeah. Okay, fair Shrek. Um, you can go ahead and make your charge. We'll get this guy out of the way, we'll clear off the dead guys here. Okay, and then you can make your roll. So plus one to your success die because of Reggie's leadership. It's towards the end of the session. I'm going to spend a luck to reroll those threes. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. I, want cut. I want cut his arms off. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Um, you run up. Uh, you step through. Um, you swing down cleanly um, with your power claymore. It cuts through the body blocker armor like butter. Um, and you, uh, you know, while you're still holding onto the weapon, uh, you swing down, you carve one off. Then you follow through with a second swing and carve off the second. Good! Patch. Okay. Um, so I was going to move to the top of it. I remember. I was going to move to the top of the stairs. Can I fire over silver pretty well to hit purple? Yep. You're good. Okay. Because you have um, so all that. Into combat, yeah. Yep. So you will have to hit. You all have to su succeed with a skill die as well. Okay. And plus one on the. Ooh, uh, nope. That's only a seven total. Seven. Um, what's your bonus? Uh, it's a five. And then okay. You get so the you one did. So the, you did get yeah. some. You did at least get some successes. Okay. Um, okay. So you miss. You don't terribly miss. Um, but you do. Um, you do miss him. Um, and then, uh, this guy is, all right, so he is here, he was gonna, let's see, purple is gonna pick up his weapon, um, he is going to, yeah, I mean, he'll, um, he's gonna cancel that and just use an auxiliary to draw his blade, um, so draw a blade instead, um, all right, and then that's his go. 
And then uh, that guy's dead. And then for Shrek, for your last thing, while the guy's still standing there, you front kick him and send him tumbling backwards over the um, yes, absolutely. barrier. Uh, and he hits and lands on the ground. Um, at this point, you do notice that there's a couple um, third eye drones that have followed into the building as all the action is in there now at this point. Um, all right. I, I love... I let out a woo, Ric Flair style. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, so then, uh, top of the order, Reggie. Uh, uh, no, wait. Know. Sorry. Uh, declare. Declare in reverse order. My bad. All right. So red's gone. Um, purple is gonna. Um, he is gonna defend and uh, attack Rauka. So you're gonna get a minus two to your attack roll for him, um, Rauka. Um, can I just like suplex this guy or something? Uh, sure. So you want to unarm combat him? Yeah. Okay. Just in my pack. Yeah. Yep, you got it. Uh, for Shrek. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna run towards the, I'm gonna follow Rauka. Okay. So you're gonna rush towards yeah, the I'll room. Follow... Yeah. Both actions. Okay. Rush. Rush. Uh, patch. Uh, so, do you think I would have been able to suss out that he was trying to shoot someone in the room? Like, in um, that other room? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think Okay, then I'm going to go try to look in that room to see if I can... So, I'm just, just going to move uh, into the room, because I'm going to start looking for survive, uh, um, reporter. Alright. Because I think the big meaty guys have this handled. So, you're going to rush into the room? Yeah. Okay. Silver, you're going to um, go at this guy? I'm actually just going to cover the girl. Just grab her and... Really? And, yeah. Don't be afraid. Come and meet. I mean, she's probably going to be terrified, but she's going to live, maybe. Uh, okay. So <laughs> you're probably gonna... already pretty terrified. Okay, so you're going to move to hostage? So you're going to yeah move to... Yeah, because no, cause I can kind of see her here, right? Uh, yeah, you definitely... Not... Yeah. She's not being, she's not, no one's next. Well, the purple guy's there, but no one yeah, else Yeah, but is. that's it. No, there's no one else there. He's the last guy left. Yeah, I'm just going to scoop her up. Okay. The uh, other guys are fucked. Yep. And <laughs> Reggie, what do you do? I just continue to motivate the team at this point. Okay, go ahead and give me that leadership roll again. Wow. Okay. Um, super lead. Wow. Yeah. Um, lead. So gonna I'm going to say that with uh, with that type of success, uh, you all are going to get a plus one to all rolls. So your success die and your skill dice as well. Paul, can I forgo that and run faster? Mm, sure. I'll give you another two. I'll give you another two meters of movement. Yes. Okay. Um. All right, uh, Silver, you go. So you're gonna just move over to the uh, to the reporter. Yeah. Okay. Go One, ahead. Do your move. Two. I mean, that would be just, a, you can do your rush too. So I mean, you got yeah. Um, yeah, I just I, I guess I just protect her. Yeah. I'm assuming she's like cowering under this desk. So she's like tied up to a chair. Um, you know, she's bound okay. to the chair. You know, on the other side of the desk. So you like you move. Yeah, you walk in. And you like purple. fucking flip the desk against the fucking wall. Um, yeah. You just throw it. Uh, the the reporter kind of like looks at you like kind of a little wide eyed and like hmm. Um, but I make the purple guy know that he's got to go through me to. Yeah, fair enough. Okay, uh, Rauka. Uh, okay, let me attack this dude. Yep. Uh, so what am I getting? Plus minus so, two, but plus something else. So do you, have you hit have you hit him already? No, not this guy. Okay. So why would you be getting a minus two? Didn't you say it was defending? Oh, yes. Yeah, so minus two, but Reggie yeah, gave you a plus one, so minus one. That's a miss anyway, I think. Um, what, What's your bonus? Eight. I mean, it's definitely not a miss. Oh, okay. you, you hit on the... So 15 minus one is 14. So you hit him on that. And, right. and then you get a plus two... What, plus eight to all these other ones? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you hit him for another four successes so six uh, plus six okay. damage uh so, and uh, to the head I'd also 
like to do the feet tear right through them. Okay, so what's that do? Uh, anytime an attack, or uh, this feat may be used when a hand-to-hand -hand attack inflicts a wound, uh, target instantly loses an additional four hit points. Sh okay, sure. Um, so go ahead and, um, so roll your damage and add the four on top of that. Actually, um, n no. I'll mark the four because that goes through the armor, so I'm going to mark that now. Now go ahead and roll your damage. So that's another plus six on top of your Mutilator Fist and your Strength Bonus, which is plus one. So plus seven damage total. So 16 more damage? Uh, no, nine. Well... Oh, uh, plus... Uh, oh, you only rolled a two on that. Okay. Um, all right. Um, so that is enough to successfully kill him um so like yeah you you come in and you uh charge him uh and you you run through um you hit him hard enough that i mean it, it's not as spectacular as i mean eh, you had four successes though i mean it's still pretty fucking spectacular um but i will say that you probably instead of um completely decapitating this guy you just 180 his helmet um and completely snap his neck um with the left hook uh, and, um, drop him to the ground. He is dead. Oh. Yep. Now that was the last one. Um, squads, the, uh, guys are cleared out. Uh, and, uh, so the woman is kind of still struggling against her restraints as, uh, you know, Silver comes in and towers over her. <laughs> I untie her. Okay. I don't, I don't say anything to her. I just untie the ropes. Okay. Um, so, you know, she, you do that, and then she kind of, like, reaches up and, like, pulls the gag off of her face. She's like, how is my camera? And you uh, look, there's, like, three Third Eye drones, but the, there was one, like, in the office that's kind of smaller than the others, which is still, um, up and operating in the corner. I just shrug at her? I don't... I don't know. <laughs> um, she kind of looks over, and, like, she goes up and checks it, and, uh, then she's like... Fuck, this is going to be great! Um, and she, like, um, deactivates it and, like, uh, actually, uh, no, she, no, she pulls out and she's, like, uh, she immediately, like, um, reaches into the side of it and, like, pulls out, like, a baton um, that's, like, a microphone. Yeah. Um, and then uh, she is, like, um, and then she starts to uh, talk uh, at the camera. She's, like, uh, this is uh, Clarissa, Clarissa Funch. Uh, Third Eye News, uh, here at the Stupid Cola Factory, where I was just taken hostage by a Ninth Division cell, um, but was rescued by a Slay Industry squad. Um, she points to you, Silver, because you're the closest one. She's like, um, what is your name and what squad are you from? Uh, Silver. Rauka Rauka put Rauka. <laughs> She's like, uh, okay. Um, and uh, what are your thoughts on this... Uh, bloody devastation that you have just laid upon uh, the Ninth Division traitors. Set the example for others. All right. Wonderful. Well, I am indebted to you and Slay Industries as always. Uh, thank you very much. This is Clarissa Funch, Third Eye News, signing off. Uh, and then she, like, the um, drone kind of, like, the red lights on the drone kind of come down, the little flashlight that was on to give her proper lighting turns off. Uh, and then she, like, puts the baton away. And then she kind of, like, that, like, facade that she put on, she just kind of, like, poof. Like, she just kind of, like, her whole body kind of drops. She's like, this is my first fucking day. <sighs> uh, I'm like, same. <laughs> <laughs> um, she, uh, she kind of laughs at that a little bit. Uh, Reggie, do you come into the, um, building once everything's cleared yeah. out? Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah, uh, so you guys all kind of come into the office here around her. Um, she's like, uh, she says, uh, I thought for sure you guys were going to just let me get fucking splattered over that wall. <sighs> um, she's like, thank you. Uh, she says, um, listen, I, uh, I, I owe you guys. So um, if, you, if you need something in the future, um, she hands Silver, closest guy, uh, her card. She's like, uh... Give me a call and I'll see what I can do, okay? Okay. It's like, I gotta go clean the shit out of my pants now. So, bye. Um, <laughs> bye. <laughs> uh, 
she makes her way out. The uh, the shiver uh, the shiver units um, kind of like take her and like get her you know like call in a um, somebody to get her um, medics to get her checked out and escort her back. Uh, so you guys kind of go back out um, with the shiver squad, um, and uh, Sergeant Mac comes up to the group of you, uh, and he's like, um, "Good job." Took out all the bad guys, saved the good guy. Not much else you can hope for for your first mission. Plus, we look pretty cool, yeah. you know <laughs> uh, Mac laughs a little bit at uh, Patch's comment. It's like, uh, yeah, you guys have the right attitude for ops, I suppose. It's like, um, we'll uh, we'll get you back to the uh, we'll get you back to the motor pools at the halls, and then you uh, you can collect your payment and go your separate ways from there. I make sure to scoop up my uh, fen on the way out. Yeah, yeah. You pick up your, you know, your weapons or whatever you dropped and whatnot. Um, so they take you back uh, to the BPN hall. You cash in on your credits, um, and there is not an insignificant uh, amount of coverage uh, in regards to the incident on Third Eye News. Um, the person who is being paid attention to the most uh, in the incidents is Rauka. Um, there is some, you know, the uh, Clarissa's um, interview. Uh, with silver kind of mixed in with um, different drone footages of the fighting. Um, they say, uh, you know, in exciting news today in the uh, Sugar Street section of downtown, uh, a brand new squad, uh, Rauka Rauka Put Rauka, has, uh, <laughs> has managed to successfully thwart a uh, Ninth Division cell uh, who captured one of our own Third Eye reporters, uh, Clarissa Funch. Uh, provides us with more more details, and then it cuts into you know her edited thing with that. Um, she has some additional commentary at the end um, in regards to uh, what the Ninth Division guy was trying to do in terms of recruiting and how Slay Industry shows once again uh, their superiority uh, and their uh, dedication to protecting the civilians of Mort City. Uh, so we'll go ahead and wrap it there. So if we look at the BPN, y'all get. Just move it over to here. So you're going to get 250 credits each. Mm -hmm. uh, you're going to get a 0.2 SCL increase. So um, for the purposes of your sheet, you are now going to be in SCL 10.2 um, is what you're going to be. And then additionally, I think you're going to get two experience each here. Let me just double check. And at the end. Oh, there. La la la. <clears throat> they get 250 credits. I get 225. Because you got the debt rank one? Yep. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. All right, warning range points, spending experience. Okay, so for downtime, experience points are awarded. Each character that took part in the game session earns two experience points. The GM may award uh, one additional experience point per player per session. Uh, GMs are advised to uh, award additional points sparingly and only to those who really need them, either by doing great things, uh, taking risks, or repeatedly succeeding against all odds. Rauka, take an extra experience point. So you take Yeah! Three. I mean, the squad's named after you, after all. I gotta, <laughs> I gotta be uh, respectful of that. So you, he gets three, everybody else gets two. Um, so log your earnings, so uh, promise fee for the completion of a BPN, Hunter Sheet, or anything else. Uh, so yeah, again, like I said, take your 250, or in for Shrek's case, take the 225. Log your SCL upgrade, so you're all at 10.2 now. Uh, rep replenish your luck and your flux. Um, mm -mm, characters can heal, I don't think anybody took any... Did anybody take any HP damage? I, I did, but I regenerate, so... Yeah, so you regenerate it. Anybody else besides Silver? I did. Okay. Do you re you regenerate it one though, right? Two. No. I, I read um, it. It's one every advanced... fifteen minutes for the first, and then two after that. For so advanced like, carrions. Me? No, no, I'm a storm. No, I'm saying advanced carrions regenerate two. I think they have regenerate one. Uh, oh, sorry. Fine with that. I know that there's another race that regenerates besides them. I'm pretty the sure. The other stormers do. What's that? Other Stormer race. Uh, oh, maybe obvious. I'm thinking of Xenos. Yeah, I, I didn't see anything. Like that. No. Okay. Might. Okay. no. Um, how much HP did you take, Rauka? Uh, I, took, I took four. Four, all right. So... 
Let's see here it is. Oh, I should do this Back to here, a lot of names. Lord Carrion is listed 150 times in the textbook. <laughs> Spending experience points. So, uh, depending on the amount of time specified for downtime, character may heal some or all of their injuries. Downtown represents a single overnight stop. Each character may heal one moon, two hit points in any conditions that affect them. Um, Patch, are you going to uh, spend any of your flux that you had for the day to patch up Rauka? Uh, yeah, I can do that. All right. So under um, under cautious circumstances, um, you can. This is a um, calculation you can make very easily. Um, not okay. under the threat of combat or anything like that. Um, so you, you patch Rauka up and Rauka, um, patch manages to heal you up back to full. Thanks, patch. That's what I'm here for. And then I can also heal my death suit with a, uh, FR eight roll, um, two points for each roll. Okay. So Do you I'm have to try that? So, yeah. okay. Yeah, so that's uh, that heal two, and then wait a while, and then yeah, protective three. Uh, yeah. Okay. So yeah, both of those would. Okay. Right. So you're able to get back your HP and everything like that, no problems. Your armor damage will sustain until you spend the money to repair it. Um, How much is well, that? Do you know? Um, let's talk about that more in the Discord. I'll give you that information yeah. so you can do it. I'm on that. We're already pretty far over the time, but, you know, we had a lot of intro shit and whatnot. Um, so... I'm... Would yes? Silver give me back my concussion, concussion grenade, or if not, he just keeps it? I don't really care either way. Because <laughs> I realized how bad I am at throwing grenades after I started reading the rule more. <laughs> Whoops. I need to basically roll a nine uh, <laughs> to, to not blow myself up. <laughs> all right. Well, like I said, um, all that other uh, stuff, and I can give you the info on repairing stuff and whatnot in the Discord, um, but we're going to go ahead and wrap it up here. So if anybody tuned in and watched, thank you for watching. Um, same time next week, 6.30 Eastern Standard Time. Let's see if we can give these guys a little bit more of a, of a hard time. So thank you. No. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs>